I love like the four years that I'm able to go to the library where I can that off, have Chris. time to myself if I need anything, get a project done or anything, if I don't do it at home. It's a place where I can do research and I know that teachers are going to help me out. Oh, yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. I have like Yes, ma'am. I appreciate you. school, they're really hectic sometimes and here... Okay, so it's a great presentation from Karen Robinson and the Media Specialist for Media Month. This evening, our student showcase is from Orange Park Junior High, Mrs. Kristen Rashar. And let's give a round of applause, that's right. And um, our Orange Park Junior High School Chorus Ensemble.
All right, good evening. We will, um, at this time, first we'd like to just say thank you to the Orange Park Junior High course. They were wonderful. Um, it's always exciting to have our, our students come out and dazzle us with their talent, and they certainly did dazzle us tonight. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Lieutenant Bell, the Acting Commander Chaplain for the NAS Jacksonville, to please come and lead us in an invita invocation and the pledge. Ladies and gentlemen, let us pray. Everlasting God, as we gather in this place of learning this evening, in recognition of the month of the military child, we are reminded of your loving grace you have for all humanity, but particularly the special place you have in your heart for children. It is recorded in your holy scriptures that we should look to them to see an example of what unqualified trust and total dependence look like in application. And then you further tell us in your word that for such as these children is the kingdom of God. So today we pause to lift up to you, our school children generally, and our military children specifically, asking that you would abundantly be gracious towards this unique group of children who not only bear the burden of being members of transient families who come and go frequently, but too often become statistics of single parent homes due to military requirements. Oh God, if you would bring these children, these families closer to your bosom, from this they will know that no matter the challenges they face, Almighty God is near and available to help in time of need. And we also ask for your watchful eyes to be upon the schools that our children attend and that your wisdom, your patience, and your compassion be generously poured out into those who provide for the education of our children each day. To this end, O oh God, we ask your most sacred blessings. And as we commence with this meeting this evening, we invite your divine presence to remain with us as we navigate through the issues at hand. In your most holy name, we pray. Amen. You, know, you will continue standing with me as we recite together the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless you. Thank you, Lieutenant Bell. At this time, I'll now call to order the Clay County School Board meeting of April 6th. I welcome citizens of Clay County. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to attend tonight's school board meeting. This meeting is our opportunity as your elected representatives to collaborate openly and make decisions that will decide the future direction of our public schools and the education of our children here in Clay County. If you wish to address the board, there will be an opportunity to speak for three minutes. Please fill out a card which you will find located in the back of the room indicating the specific item, number, or topic you wish to speak about and turn it in promptly. No additional cards will be accepted once the board moves to the discussion agenda. Your participation is welcomed and appreciated. Thank you. At this time, we have no recognitions or awards, so we'll go into our school showcase, and we'll ask uh, Mr. Carrie Dix, the principal of Clay High School, to come up and present to us. Thank you. All right, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to share some great things about Clay High School. Um, I'm principal at Clay High School, very excited to be here. Let's see if I can get this thing to work. Thank you. Technical difficulty. Okay. 
Never let them see you sweat. Got it to move to the second one. Well, now you flipped it. There we go. I guess I'll just signal you, Chris. All right, you can see who makes up Clay High School as far as students go. Uh, makes up the Blue Devil population, almost 1,400 students. Um, very respectful students. Um, on our Insight survey, our teachers said that 95% of our students are, interact with them respectfully. Um, that's exciting to me. Um, we, have, we have very respectful students. Um, that's great. Uh, next slide. Um, what makes up our, our staff? Uh, we're looking at 90 teachers um, that are on, our, on that uh, teacher pay. Um, and they teach over 180 different courses. Um, as well as that, we have 12 um, support staff that works in the classroom each and every day to make our students um, a huge difference in, in that student learning that takes place. Um, celebrating our strengths. Chris, if you go to the next slide. Uh, go ahead and click again. School culture, uh, insight survey. Uh, very excited that Clay High School was part of, of that top uh, quartile for the insight survey. Um, we have 96% of our teachers that Clay High School is a good place to teach and learn. Um, we have a family-like atmosphere. And um, that goes a long ways. Uh, also, very few teachers that transfer. We have a high teacher retention rate. Uh, we, we want to make uh, people feel special at Clay High School. Um, next slide, celebrating our strengths academically. Um, we have a, offering more AP classes and more dual enrollment classes than ever. Um, so that's exciting to do. Give them more rigor and um, offer more classes and encourage more students to take those high, high level classes. Um, four high impact teachers this year, very proud of each one of those in our reading um, classrooms. Um, we also have an academy of law enforcement, criminal justice. Um, so very excited to have that program. It was once a model program. And I wouldn't doubt in the next year or two it's going to be a model program again. So very excited about that. As far as community relationships, we have very strong partnerships with many of our businesses here in Clay County. Um, uh, can't wait to see what happens uh, with, our, with our Criminal Justice Academy and the relationships they're building with our government agencies, with the emergency uh, system that's in place here in Clay County, as well as all of our officers, um, Orange Park, um, Green Cove, and the Clay County Sheriff's Department. So we're building good bonds there and good relationships there. As well as the parent associations and the former alumni, um, we're talking about booster clubs. We're talking about people that work with our bands and our chorus people, excellent people. Um, being at one of the oldest schools in the county, one of the oldest high schools, we have plenty of alumni, and, and they do support us. They're coming out on the weekends, Friday nights, and, and through the week supporting us, and that, that's such a huge part to um, help our programs flourish. Um, next slide, accomplishments, graduation rate, 91%. Um, last two years, it has, has continued to go up. Very proud of that. Uh, AP teachers, AP students, uh, their passing rates are among the top in Northeast Florida. Um, also high passing rates in our EOCs in U.S. History and Biology, so um, a good strong strong group there in our academics. Extracurricular uh, successful sports programs. We had two teams this year that were state runners up, our competitive cheerleading as well as our wrestling program. We had a Final Four in our football program that went to play in after, after Thanksgiving. That's what we shoot for every year, so very excited about that. First time girls basketball team has won a district championship in about 10 years, so very excited for those young ladies as well. Um, our award-winning band and course, they're constantly superior in their MPAs, so very excited about those and those young people, that both young men and young ladies that, that participate in our music programs. Um, NJROTC, uh, this year, they're number four in the region. First time they qualified in probably about six years. They're going to nationals this year. And thank goodness it's, it's right here in Jacksonville. So they get to sleep in their own bed at night. They're comfortable. Um, it's the academic team of our NJRTC that's going this year. Very proud of them as well. Uh, next slide. Transforming reading across the content. Um, over, over the last year, we did increase by 4% in reading. But as you can tell, the percentage of students below grade level is, is something that we really needed to focus on. Our ninth through 11th grade, 45% are higher that are reading below grade level content, reading across the curriculum. Um, so next slide. 
these are our school improvement goals uh, for this, this year. We're trying to increase our, our total reading pass rate by 5%, our reading learning gains by 10%, and our lower quartile learning gains by 15%. Um, it's, it's our goal and it's our road to success um, and uh, we're working hard to achieve that. Reading across the content area, this is where our teachers are working hard in professional de development and PLCs each and every week. Um, we, we have been pushing content area. When you see classrooms of students sitting in the gym during PE time, reading an article and going through buck strategies and annotating in the bleachers right in there, we're working hard to, to really um, increase our reading across the content areas. Next slide. Uh, transforming instruction, these are some of the areas that we've worked on monthly um, through our whole group and, and through our PLCs as well, professional development. Next slide. Um, opportunities for growth, uh, definitely reading and math. Um, as you can see, our five-year goal, reading achievement, 55 to 70% in math, almost, a, almost a, another 15%. That's our goal for doing that. Um, as you can see, it's, it's, it's going to be a tough battle, but we're in for the fight, and we're excited, and we want to improve. And um, our teachers and students are working hard to do that. Um, next goal, next slide. Um, next steps, this is what we're going to be focused on training for teachers. As you can see there on the left, those are, those are listed there. You can read those. Also some technology needs. Looking for Wi-Fi throughout our, our school system, uh, through our school campus. Uh, we have a lot, but we, we definitely like more. And Chromebooks and mobile computer labs would be also an addition that we, that we look for as a need. Next slide. Our most valuable and important, you know, the important stakeholders, our students, extracurricular activities. Um, surprisingly, 66% of our students report being involved in sports. Um, that's incredible. We encourage our ninth graders when they come in to get involved. High school is a short, short term for them. They don't realize it till they're all of a sudden a senior and said, man, where did the time go? So we really in, 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 in want them in, in something involved so they have fun in high school, so they want to be there and, and have fun and have a, a lot of great memories. Uh, next slide. Last slide, please. Um, again, important for our students. Uh, growth in advanced coursework, AP Capstone. Um, something new to Clay High School this year. It's going to offer an AP Capstone diploma. So we're excited about that. And our dual enrollment classes, as I mentioned earlier, we're offering more of those. Um, internships for students in Academy of Law Enforcement. Uh, those opportunities for them to go to work at the emergency operating system. Those go work at the dispatch center in Green Cove and Orange Park and, and Clay County Sheriff's Office, as well as our CTE programs that are offering them hands-on uh, participation that they can learn from that. Um, uh, that's, that's basically it. I can't thank you enough for your time. I know it was quick, and they told me I had 40 minutes, but uh, <laughs> I cut it down as much as I could. But, um, you know, once a saying, uh, once a blue devil, always a blue devil. That's right. All right. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dix. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, All right, this will be our last call for comment cards. If anybody would like to speak during the public comment, please turn them in now. And at this time, we'll ask Commander Pat Thurman to come up for a scheduled citizen's 10 minutes. Um, Mr. Thurman is on our agenda. I believe there's, um, Chris, is there a slideshow for him, a PowerPoint? Thank you. She's still glaring at him. <laughs> it's just, I only got two slides, but it's lined by one. Well, good evening. Uh, out of force of habit, my name's Commander Pat Thurman. I live at 2552 Willow Creek Drive. Fleming Island, Florida, 3200390447261315. I was really planning on walking around with this. That ain't going to happen, is it? No, it's right here. Okay, um, I asked for this 10 minutes because I have a lot of material that I'd like to talk to you about tonight, and it all has to do with the JRTC program. Um, the JRT, uh, JRTC program's mission is stated in the National Defense Act of 1916. The purpose of JRTC is to instill in students the value of citizenship, service to the United States, personal responsibility, and a sense of accomplishment. Basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to make great American citizens. 
Um, the NJRTC program was established in public law in 1964 and may be found in Title 10 U.S. Code of Laws. Uh, the first thing, let's see, achievements, great. Uh, Clay County is blessed to have five units. As far as I know, and I've been all over the country, I'm a national instructor for JRTC. I train about 125 to 150 new instructors every year out in California. There's only two counties with five units, uh, Clay County and Henry County in Georgia. So one would think that we are very friendly uh, and very supportive of NJRTC. Um, of our five units, we have 10 retired Navy and Marine Corps instructors with over 200 years served in the military. In addition to my 24 years in the military, I've been doing ROTC for 15 years, which means I've got about 40 years of experience doing this. Our Middleburg unit has won 13 Distinguished Unit Unit Achievement Awards. That's basically just for our unit. Uh, we've qualified for the State Drill Championship 12 times of the 14 years I've been there. We've won the state championship twice, number one in the state. Uh, qualified for nationals and qualified uh, and entered nationals two of four times because of sequestration we were unable to go. And our academic team finished fifth in the nation, Middleburg. Wow. Middleburg, okay. Not normally a place you think about academically, but I do. In fact, we started 12 years ago, we started an academic competition called the Brain Brawl that is uh, now the national, um, basically, yardstick for academics at Middleburg, right there, for ROTC. Uh, a couple of years ago, when we first won the state championship, we had numerous n newspaper articles printed. I sent emails out. Um, yeah, we were all over the news, but we didn't get invited uh, to the school board meeting. So the second year, we repeated. Same thing, emails, uh, newspaper articles, no invitation. So I invited myself, and I dragged a six-foot trophy down here, and I dragged poor uh, Principal uh, John O'Brien down here, and, uh, and I brought the kids in, and we had a great time. But I invited myself to the party. Uh, someone, I think, in the county office needs to be point of contact for recognition for RTC and get these young men and women in front of you guys and recognized. All right, next slide. Transportation. Oh, okay, he's going at his own pace. That's all right. Transportation. Uh, the area 12 that we compete in is actually bigger than the state. It's North Florida and the entire state of Georgia, so it's about a state and a half. That means that uh, and only about 20 of the 20% uh, of the units are in Florida, which means 80% in Georgia, which means we have to compete in Georgia. Um, anybody who has been in Clay County for a while knows that our school buses can drive eight hours to Pensacola. They can drive 12 or 13 or 14 hours if you've got the rear end for it to Key West, but we can't go one hour to Kings Bay. And the reason why is, is because the drivers are only insured for Florida. So I called up and said, hey, can we get a, a bus to take us to uh, Georgia? Because most of our competitions are up there, and they're actually fairly close in southern Georgia. And they said, well, we can't afford to insure 360 drivers. And I said, well, I only need one. And of course, being the smart aleck I am, I didn't get a real good answer after that. But uh, we would like to talk about that a little bit more, and uh, I can see that just having a couple of drivers insured for Georgia would really open up things for us. Next, organic fundraising. Um, I was in a unit for a year and a half at Swanee County. Uh, we ran the uh, visitor side um, football um, food and beverage side. We took all that money in as an organic fundraiser and it helped pay for our unit. To drag 40 kids around half a dozen times a year at a twelve to $1,500 a day in a uh, charter bus is very expensive. It adds up really quick. There's no organic fundraisers, as far as I know, at any of the Clay County schools for the ROTC units. All the money goes to the football team. So I'd like to see, you know, we do, we do uh, color guards at every football game. We do color guards at many school events, but there's never any compensation for those, and we do those willingly. That's fine. That's supporting our schools. 
but we'd like to have at least some kind of organic opportunity within the school to pay for all this. Enrollment and disenrollment. Um, we have to keep our units uh, uh, vibrant and actually legally keep them, we have to have 100 cadets a year. Uh, there's five units in Clay County, like I said, which means you're not going to have a whole lot of cross pollination. You can go to any uh, school and go to an ROTC unit. So we, it's like we have five military academies. You can, you can pick and choose whichever one you want to go to. So it's hard sometimes. So we have to have opportunities to go to the middle schools, spin a few rifles, you know, show off our stuff, and that way we can recruit. We haven't had too hard of a problem with that. Um, the bad part is, is that sometimes in some schools, uh, we get dumped on by uh, the, the uh, by some of the advisors. Basically what happens is, here's a discipline problem, you guys fix them. And like I tell the parents when they bring me a kid like that, and they say, hey, um, this kid needs some discipline. Can you fix them? And I said, it took you 15 years to screw them up. I can't fix them. I can't fix them in one hour a day. And that usually, they usually don't follow up with me after that. But, <laughs> but what we do is we do get some kids in, and they just don't comply with the rules. They won't get their hair cut. They won't wear their uniform, et cetera. And we have to disenroll them. And that can be a huge problem. It can be a huge problem with some principals. It can be a huge problem with some of the advisors, uh, counselors. And in our contract, we have a contract that's signed by the, by the superintendent with the US Navy. It's a completely different contract from the CCEA contract. And basically what it says in that contract is we take the kids in that we want and we let go of the kids we don't want. And that is our prerogative signed by the superintendent of the county between him and the United States government. So we're looking for a little bit more support in that, in that regard of disenrollment. Scholarships. Now, I'm not going to talk about anything bad. Scholarships, there are years at Middleburg High School. There were years at, is Principal Dick still in here? OK. By the way, they had a great academic team, fourth in the air. That was awesome. Uh, the, uh, the scholarships, there have been years when Middleburg High School had 15 graduating ROTC cadets that made more scholarship money than the 500 classmates of theirs. And how does that happen? We send them to the Naval Academy, we send them to West Point, Air Force Academy. We, there's uh, hundreds of ROTC programs. I have an ROTC student with me here tonight. That's $200,000 scholarship. The money adds up really quick. We're sending them to Ivy League schools on ROTC scholarships, the ones that still have them. Uh, Notre Dame, etc. They're just fantastic programs. And where's all this coming from? It's coming from the ROTC units. It's coming from us. I'm the one that mentors the kids. My partner's the ones that mentors the kids. We are the ones that do the scholarship paperwork with them. We're the ones that help them throughout. We are basically their counselors. What I'd love to see is more recognition for those kids. One year, a few years ago, Clay put four kids in the Naval Academy. That's on, I've never even heard of that. And my son went to Naval County from Fleming Island. Four, that's incredible. That's, that's $2 million worth of scholarships in four kids. Community, uh, community service hours. Uh, there, are, there are five units here that provide about 25,000 community service hours and school hours. If you added up all the ROTC units, school service hours, and community service hours, it's more than all of the other school service organizations combined. And it's just our 100 kids, so 500 kids. Um, we don't get a dime for that, and that's fine. That's why we do it. It's community service. It's school service. It's part of the job. But it's also time away from uh, kids, my school. Oh, boy, that was a quick 10 minutes. I'll wrap it up. Uh, pro dev. In fact, I tell you what. Why don't we just go to the last slide? Is that the uh, amount of time? I'm so sorry. I should have timed this. I just threw it together. Um, let me go through the su summary requests here real quick. Um, real quick, recognition. We'd like to see some more recognition for the kids, uh, for for the championships, for the college scholarships, for the community service hours. We'd like to see some bus drivers that can that we can take to out of state events. Uh, organic fundraising, as I spoke to. Uh, instructor authority for enrollment and disenrollment. Uh, 
in-service training for instructors. We get in-service training from the Navy every year. I'm not trying to denigrate what Clay County provides. It just really isn't applicable to us. We came out with 20 years in the Navy. I've been instructing pilots since I was 26. Um, high school training for me is really kind of a waste of time. I know what I'm doing. I got a master's degree um, in education and uh, leadership. Uh, we'd like to see that wave for us. Uh, the last two things, I'm so sorry about going over. I'll just sum them all up for you. There's a CCA contract provision for a $2,200 master's degree uh, supplement. I have a master's degree. It's on my transcripts. I've never received it. I've asked for it numerous times. So if some of my colleagues who have master's degree, we're always told we don't qualify. We don't have the right paperwork. We don't. It doesn't really pertain to what we teach, et cetera. Well, my master's degree is from Air Force War College, Air University. It's on leadership, ethics, military science, military history. That's exactly what I teach. Okay, I have no idea. It's accredited university. I have no idea why we don't get it. And all I and, and you know, they very kindly tell me I'm not qualified. I would I would uh, fight that. Last bit, and this is really the only reason I came for it tonight. <laughs> I was trying to butter you up with all the other stuff. <clears throat> and now I'm out of time. <clears throat> we are, there's 123 supplements on the CCA contract. Everything from intermule J, assistant JV tiddlywinks. No, not tiddlywinks, but uh, intermural sports in junior high school all the way up to the head football coach. Out of those 123, there's no ROTC. I have asked for it numerous times. Poor Miss, uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. Sorry. I, I know you get tired of hearing for it, but I, I, I look at it like this. We had a, um, we had a uh, athletic director who was also the head football coach and the head baseball coach. He had, he got all three supplements. Okay. I have nine teams I coach, plus community service hours, plus everything else that we do. We're only asking for what, say, a band director would get. And yet we work all year, including the summer. Um, if it was in the contract, it wouldn't be up to the principal. It would just be up to the county. That's why we're asking for it to be in the contract, because there are some principals who actually give us co-curricular supplements. But by putting it into the contract, it's not up to the whim of the, the last principal or the new principal or whatever. So we respectfully, um, for the 1,000 hours a year that I have logged, uh, 15,000 hours of overtime that I haven't been paid one dime, I would love to see is some kind of coaching supplement. And I, I sincerely apologize and thank you for not shutting me down and turn off my mic. I would never do that. Um, and thank you for sending that PowerPoint to us and giving us the backup. I, I know we all reviewed it, and it certainly is stuff that we do need to look into. Um, right. and, and buses, I mean, you're an It's so hard to get line. everything done in 10 minutes. I apologize for that. No problem. We, we completely, um, and Mr. Superintendent, whatever you can look into that would help our students in the NJROTC program, we would appreciate. And, and again, look into, um, I know it's a state statute or something about the master's degree and out of field stuff so I'll let you in HR handle that but look into whatever um, you think you can do to help yes ma'am and through the chair I would say that uh, I'm excited about uh, NJRTC in this in this county I'm excited about what we'll do next year for Oak Leaf and I will go through all your recommendations and see what we can accommodate and uh, I understand you're on weekends you're on time you know it's a lot but I appreciate your leadership, I appreciate your honesty, and I will get back with you as I always try to do. All right, thank you, sir, and yeah, thank sir. you for uh, all taking the time tonight and listening to me. Thank you, Commander. And don't forget, we have one that's not Navy, that's Army, but it yeah, matters. <laughs> that's right. <It's laughs> no comment, right? <laughs> Camp Blanding is in our backyard. <laughs> Go Navy. <laughs> um, before we go into our um, public comment, I was given a, car, a card here from Anna Young, and it's on student travel. Would you prefer to speak in the beginning during public comment, or do you want me to pull the item to the end and speak at that item? I'm fine with doing it in the beginning. That way, if you don't want to stay for the whole meeting, you can leave, but it's, it's your decision. 
Okay, then we'll go into that if you'd like to be the first one up. Thank you. That's okay. I just didn't want to make you wait till the end of the meeting if we pulled it and you're sitting here. I appreciate you all allowing me time to speak about this cause that's very close to my and my husband's heart. Would you just state your name and address for the record? Sure. My name is Anna Young, 4027 Country Meadows Drive, Middleburg, Florida, 32068. Um, Education First has been involved in foreign travel, and we have students coming every summer for a very short time, usually about two weeks, to stay with families in our area. This is a tremendous opportunity for any Clay County students because as eighth graders coming into ninth grade, they can get a huge jump start on their community service hours. For this program, the household gets 15 hours a week. That's 30 community service hours if they only have one student of age to take advantage. For the juniors that are coming up to seniors and looking at colleges and applying to colleges, not only do they get the benefit of the community service hours, but this is something that looks wonderful on their resume, especially if they do it more than once and host a number of di different students from different countries. So this year we have 51 students coming from China. They're nine to 13 years old. They will need a family to stay with from July 13th through July 24th. Essentially, it's evenings and weekends. They attend English classes while they're here in the morning. We've hired local Clay County teachers to teach them who are ESOL qualified. And in the afternoon, they go out with their program leader to practice the English that they've learned in the classroom. So we're taking them to Mosh. We're taking them to Chow for a good cookout and swimming party. Uh, we're doing all kinds of different things in the area. One of the fire departments will be giving them a tour, which they enjoyed tremendously the last few years. So I have flyers with me if anyone is interested in getting a little bit more information. And unless you guys have questions, I just wanted to hit the highlights. Well, thank you. Did anybody have a question they'd like to ask? No. All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate the information. And if anybody's interested, please get a flyer. Thank you. Our next card is Mr. Greg Wasson. Greg Wasson, 6148 County Road 352, Keystone Heights, Florida. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the NGRC programs here in Clay County. As a brief introduction, I am a 2008 graduate of Middleburg High School, where I not only graduated with honors, but served as the cadet commanding officer of the Naval ROTC unit there. I was also inducted into the Middleburg High School Hall of Fame, so I apologize for all those in the following year that saw my mug up on the wall for, for the year. It's easy for me to brag on the cadets in this program. My classmates account for West Point and Naval Academy uh, graduates, RTC scholarship recipients, among others. Being a visual creature, as uh, Commander Thurman would say in class, I brought this just for, for show and effect. Uh, I received a $150,000 Marine Corps RTC scholarship from Middlebury High School. I largely attribute that to the faculty and staff and the instructors that I had that guided me along that process. We account for thousands of volunteer service hours, as you've heard. We have classrooms lined with trophies from drill, athletics, and academic competitions. With all sincerity, I believe that Area 12 is among the most competitive and talented JRTC regions in the country, if not the most. I would dare to say that NJRTC programs are deathly competitive within their own schools. Speaking of my own unit at the high school at Middleburg, I would challenge you to match our competitive record against any other sports program and see who comes out on top, both in titles won and scholarships earned. The unsung heroes of this program are undoubtedly instructors. JRTC instructors sacrifice countless hours each day towards the development of their cadets under their instruction, and I can personally attest to arriving at school prior to 6.30 each morning to find both, at the time, Senior Chief McLean and Commander Thurman already at work preparing for their lessons mentoring cadets, filling out scholarship information on behalf of the cadets or preparing for upcoming competitions. 
While many individuals may not recognize that the NJRTC calendar is always active, there are competitions ongoing throughout the entire school year and summer. The events, in, again, include military drill, athletics, academics, orienteering, sailing, and leadership academies. Practices for these events requires before and after school preparation and work both by the cadets and instructors. While in the program, I didn't leave school until 5.30 each day. I would also like to point out that JRTC instructors put in additional instructional time as well by teaching an optional seventh period. The lessons I learned from this program and more specifically the instructors both from this program, more specifically instructors both within my unit and the schools in our region have carried with me to this day and they've shaped the foundation of my professional career and continue to do so. Honor, courage, and commitment are not mere words, but a code or a standard to live by for the cadets that leave the program. I've witnessed the strength of my instructors when advocating for their cadets. I've seen their personal sacrifice of evenings and weekends spent with their cadets. When as a father of three, I understand the need for personal time and time with family. The cadets and instructors in the NDRTC program are not only teachers and classmates, they truly are family. I respectfully request your consideration of extending equal coaching benefits and pay afforded to other sports programs to the ROTC instructors for no other reason than because they have worked and earned, those, earned that consideration and because of the results of what they do speaks for itself. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rawson. Our next speaker will be our next speaker will be Kim Stacy, followed by Keith Nichols. Good evening, um, Kim Stacy. Address is on the card. Could you pull the mic down, please? Oh yes. Good. Thank you. Okay, first of all, I'd like to extend another invitation to any of the board members, superintendent, or anybody that would like to come with me, work with me for eight hours on my job, see how things are done. With that being said, I sent a records request back in February 2nd about the air quality test, mold, mildew, random hazard, gases in the Humidity ventilations air quality test and again on 329 we have I have not heard anything about this um, it, my, I think the reply was they were looking into it. I'm not sure why it's taken so long Do we not keep these records on hand and do not do we not perform these tests every year? Something I would like to have addressed and answered, please. I also sent an email to the board the superintendent about the formula for the allocations <clears throat> and in that allocation y'all were funding a custodian through the cafeteria my question is a couple of questions i asked for um i sent an email hoping that i would get responded back from there but nobody ever responded back to me um <clears throat> if we are funding a custodian through the cafeteria is that custodian being paid by the state or the federal government and if that is the case why are we still short custodians for every for every school? Why? <clears throat> where did the money go? Where did that one money funded for that one custodian go? Because you're not paying for the custodian that's in the cafeteria. State's paying for that. So why are we still short custodians and where did that money go? I'd like to have the answer to that as well. Um, <clears throat> in the February workshop, um, thing, Mr. Um, Davis and Mr. Kemp addressed the underfunding of the custodians in the maintenance department. I appreciate y'all mentioning that. I appreciate y'all seeing that that is a problem, but we must do more than mention it. We have to look, we have to do something about this. Our schools are falling down around us. They are decaying. They are, I, we have, a, we for as long as I've been working at my school, I have a split in one of our buildings from the top of that building to the bottom of that building that's been there for four years. That is a foundation problem. We have mold and we have mildew. Our ACs, I have asked and asked that the ACs be extended for the custodians. And it's not as much as for comfort, but air quality. We work in mold and mildew infested buildings. And sooner or later, we are going to wind up in the hospital with breathing problems or mold and mildew in our lungs or stuff like this. We have to keep this air circulating. Um, 
I just need to know where this money is being up. Why are we, why are, what are we going to do about this? Are we going to continue to mention it in a bypass or are we going to seriously look into this? and do something about it. We cannot continue working like this. We're, we're not going to have buildings to teach and learn in. And if this is how you want your students and your teachers to teach and learn in, then we've got a really big problem here in the district. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Stacy. Mr. Davis, would you go ahead and look into that for us? Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Keith Nichols, followed by Miss Wanda Clymer. Thank you. My name is Keith Nichols and my address is on record. Over the last several weeks, I've been involved in quite a few conversations that have basically had the topic of 149. Now, if you want to know what the 149 is, there's word out there that right now the teachers are having an allocation overage of 149 teachers. Now, it has been brought up, you know, that this should be something that CC uh, SESPA should be really concerned about. Well, here's the problem, though. I've known Rena Lee Priva for over four years, and in the four years I've known her, I've never seen her submit an allocations package to the board. So if the teachers are over in allocations by 149, that problem exists on this side of the house and not this side of the house. So basically, you know, if there is a misalignment here, this is something that you all need to address and you all need to fight out. Uh, to suggest that the two unions should be warring with one another is it's not going to happen we're not going to do that i respect my teachers and one of the things i want to say to them right now is that when Renly gets up here and stands if there's a misadjustment and she's fighting for that that's her job that's what she's supposed to do she's supposed to fight for every employee that works in an allocated position that you all have approved so there's going to be no mutual bloodletting between us as far as I'm concerned. And I just want to let you all know that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Our next speaker is Ms. Wanda Clymer, followed by Ms. Rebecca Smith. Good evening. My name is Wanda Clymer, and my address is on file. Last month when we were here, <coughs> sorry, I brought problems to the board of restrooms and a bathroom well I wouldn't give you the name well this month I will because that problem is still there somewhat at Clay High we have a few problems and I would like to know are there plans in the works for renovation to be done to Clay High I'm so glad Mr. Dix was here because as you can see that school deserves to be renovated the girls' bathroom that is next to the cafeteria still only has one soap dispenser with the soap that will not foam, I don't care, and it will not make suds in your hands. So it's no good. Throw it away. The innards are gone out of the other soap dispenser. That's a problem. The toilets are still leaking around the floor. Either the um, wax ring is gone or the ground has settled I don't know the school's old I know it's old I went to school there but you know what our kids are worth that school looking just as good as the new schools we have Charles E. Bennett is the same way I told you there's one soap dispenser for all these little girls to use in this one bathroom I don't know what boys bathrooms look like I'm not allowed to go in them nor would I without permission but with that being said our children deserve better and if we're going to waste money on other things, we better start wasting some money on some paper towels in them bathrooms and some good soap. My grandbabies go there. I'm not going to let this drop. I will take three minutes every meeting if I have to. I'm not making threats because I hate threats. But at Clay High again, you know, we've had a great football team there. They went to state for goodness sakes, but do you know they still have an aluminum Um bench for visitors to sit on bleachers really because this is Florida we get lightning strikes without a warning you really want to be sitting on that when that happens I don't think so it's bad enough you're sitting out there on the cement so I would like to see that addressed as well I mean this school needs pressure washing they did fix the C and the H on clay high over the gym they did do that so I didn't get to complain about that 
But we also have security issues there. I went there for a field trip. I was in the back of the school. A parent comes up, goes to the classroom, never went through the front office. So I think we could also use money by putting a security gate up with a keypad. Money could be spent on a little bitty thing for bus drivers to use to open that gate, but every student that, or teacher that comes out of that back gate will have to punch in their ID or student code number. I think we can spend the money on that gate and on those keypads and what have you. We've got to have better security. People in this world are not safe anymore, and y'all know that firsthand. So I'd like to see some things done. I've got a lot of other ideas, but I'll just have to take three minutes every time we have a meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clymer. Our next speaker will be Ms. Rebecca Smith. Looks like we could do that. Mm -hmm. Mr. Superintendent, the board is um, wanting you to look into those conditions at Clay High. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And Charles E. Bennett and all the others that needed to. Yeah. In Ridgeview. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Miss Smith. I have a question. Is this a presentation for audience or is this on the GPS? This is the presentation from the audience. Okay. I just needed to know where I was going. <laughs> uh, my name is Rebecca Smith. My address is on file. I'm uh, kind of emotional this evening because um, I see the direction that our district is going and it worries me. It worries me when we elect officials to an office. We ask them to do a job and then I feel that we're tying their hands to a point. We're not always going to agree on everything. That's what makes us unique and different. We should always show respect to each other because we all do respect. However, with that being said, I know I'm fixing to say something that's not going to be popular, but oh well, that's Becky. There was 149 allocations that was up that Mr. Davis brought to this board to be cut due to data showing, you got to admit, Mr. Davis does his homework. The data showed that these positions need to be cut because the student base versus the ratio of teachers wasn't there. At the end of the day, we must pay these teachers and we should. But with that being said, when you don't have the funds coming into the district for because the children are not there, you're going to have to find that funding somewhere else. So where do we find it at? Well, we take a little bit from transportation, take a little bit from custodians, a little bit from maintenance, a little bit here and there, and what happens is we have a funding problem. We have six years to go by, nobody gets races. Status quo. We must be good stewards with the money. We cannot, we cannot waste our money. Now, with that being said, I know right now I probably got daggers in the back. But I have to speak from the heart. This is wrong. Mr. Davis has hired people that he trusts as a police to get the job done. By us doing this to them, it ties their hands. It ties the hands of Mr. Kemp up here for being able to do his job as operational person. He's responsible to make sure all these other support jobs are balanced, working, and doing, doing the job they're supposed to do. Now, with that being said, if you give me just a few seconds more, with that being said, you're tying his hands. Custodians are short people because there's no money there to pay for more people to go in there because you use the money elsewhere. You're taking from here, you're taking from there, you're taking from there. It needs to stop. 
there, for every action that you do, there's consequences for it. Our children pay for it, whether it be a clean bathroom, water on the floor because you didn't fix the toilets, no soap dispensers. Hey, we must do better. Our children demand it, and they should. They're the future leaders of tomorrow. We, as leaders, need to take ownership in this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. That concludes our public comment. At this time, we'll move into our consent agenda, the adoption of our consent <coughs> agenda. I'll entertain a motion for the adoption of the consent agenda, consent agenda with the um, exception of items C5 and C6, which have been pulled for discussion, and item C16, which has been withdrawn. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Studdard, a second by Ms. Bola. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries Sorry, mine wasn't working. Ms. Bush, did you, does it show that I voted? There we go. Sorry. Um, and before we move on, we had several proclamations on our agenda this month. So I will read them. The first one is Proclamation 17-19 School Library Month. And I don't know if anybody noticed, but as we came in today, there was a uh, video running uh, about our media centers, and it had um, different photos, events, um, testimonies from children, and it was it was very nice. So thank you for having that up today. And I'll uh, I'll read the first one: School Library Month. Whereas April of 2017 has been designated the 32nd annual National School Library Month, and whereas school libraries provide material for teachers and students that will encourage growth and knowledge and whereas school libraries provide material that will develop literary, culture, aesthetic appreciation, and ethical standards, and whereas school libraries provide material which reflects the ideas and beliefs of religious, social, political, historical, and ethnic groups and their contributions to the American and world heritage and culture, and whereas school libraries provide books to encourage children to read for pleasure, and whereas school libraries provide material to meet individual needs, varied interest, abilities, socioeconomic backgrounds, maturity levels of the students served, and whereas school libraries are a fun place for students to go and all students deserve a well-managed library to provide for free expression and access to ideas. And now therefore, be it resolved that the School Board of Clay County does hereby declare the month of April as School Library Month. Our next one, is our resolution for child abuse prevention month and each of us were given a pinwheel and this is from sednet and it is the um, symbol for the state of florida that represents child abuse prevention and our high schools were encouraged this year to plant a pinwheel garden and students actually designed pinwheels and put them outside so they brought a pinwheel for each of us Whereas Florida's future depends on nurturing the health development of our four million children currently in our state, and whereas the abuse and neglect of children can cause severe, costly, and lifelong problems, and whereas every child has a right to be safe, healthy, and educationally and developmentally on track, and whereas research shows that parents and caregivers who have support systems and know how to seek help in times of trouble are more resilient and better able to provide safe environments and nurturing experience for their children. And whereas individuals and businesses, schools and faith-based and community organizations must make children a top priority and take action to support the physical, social, emotional, and educational development and competency of all children. And whereas during the month of April, Prevent Child Abuse Florida in collaboration with the Governor's Office of Adoption and Child Protection and the Florida Department of Children and Families and the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida will implement Pinwheels for Prevention. 
a statewide campaign promoting awareness of healthy child development, positive parenting practices, and the types of concrete support families need within their communities. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the School Board of Clay County, Florida, does hereby proclaim April 2017 as Child Abuse Prevention Month and urges all of Clay County to engage in activities whose purpose is to strengthen families and communities to provide the optimal environment for healthy child development. Duly adopted by the School Board of Clay County, Florida, this sixth day of April 2017. All right, our next one. <laughs> There's four, I'm sorry. Our next proclamation is the um, Month of the Military Child. Whereas since 1986, Americans around the world recognize the sacrifice and applaud the courage of military children by celebrating the month of military child through the month of April. And whereas each day, military children undergo unique challenges which they face with resilience and dignity beyond their years. And whereas it is essential to recognize that military children make significant contributions to their country while dealing with uncertainty and concern for their parents during extended hours and long deployments. And whereas the high demand of family responsibility that military children accept that courage and strength as they serve the nation along with their parents, and whereas our men and women in uniform cannot focus on the mission or challenges ahead if they are concerned about their children at home. And whereas the school district of Clay County strives to provide a safe, nurturing environment for military children to enable a strong and more resilient fighting force. And whereas the month of the military child reinforces this concept, reminds the nation that the service members' children also serve, and gives communities an opportunity to share their gratitude for the service of military children. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the superintendent and the school board of Clay County, Florida, does hereby approve this resolution recognizing our military children through the month of April, duly adopted by the school board of Clay County, Florida, this April 6, 2017. Our last one is the School Nurturing Employee Week, whereas school breakfast and lunch are an essential part <laughs> Of the school day and whereas the food and nutrition service department is committed to providing nutritious meals to the students of clay county and whereas the food nutrition service staff serve over 4.6 million meals or more than 25,000 meals per day during the 2016-17 school year and whereas the staff of the district's food and nutrition service department understand their important role and the link between a healthy diet and a positive learning environment and whereas the staff of the district's food and nutrition service department deserves to have their important role and effort of meeting the nutritional needs of the district's students celebrate and acknowledge. Now therefore be it resolved the School Board of Clay County does hereby proclaim May 1st through 5th, 2017 as School Nutrition Employee Week, duly adopted and approved by the School Board of Clay County this sixth day of April 2017. Thank you. Uh, our next item on our agenda is our um, a CCEA update, Ms. Renna Lee Piva. Good evening. Um, I man, I've I've torn up more speeches today than I know what to do with. So I feel like a, a teacher that's in the classroom because I haven't been in a classroom for many many years. Um, <coughs> that has to change course from a from a lesson plan, and that's how I feel. I'm changing course here from a lesson plan. A couple of things I I do um, want to address openly to you is um, Commander Thurman, first of all, who um, does a great job. And we do have to look at the things he said. Um, I wish it was true that we got $2,200 for masters, but we don't. <laughs> we only get $2,000 for masters. And he is correct, because we have numerous people out there. And I'm, I'm not sure this that we're doing it right, but we, we need to investigate it. We have numerous people out there with higher education degrees that are not being paid. Um, we have people with master's degrees in curriculum, and they're teachers. And somehow, either the state or the district is saying, well, they don't have anything to do with curriculum. They're teachers. They deal with curriculum all the time. None of them are being paid for this. We have people with master's degree with ed leadership. 
but they're not principals or anything yet. They're working to it, and the state or us, I'm not sure, because I don't think all the districts are doing it right. So Commander Thurman is absolutely right when he says that he has his people and they have what's pertinent to them, which is military history, yada, yada, yada. I don't know what he does, but he has a master's degree for it, and it should be recognized. <coughs> That's a state issue that I'm asking my local politicians to address with the representatives, because I believe, Mr. Broski could correct me, but I believe it's coming from a state statute somewhere. We're talking about local control, and I'm going to harp on it all year long. We always talk about local control. Here's another example that you have to go to our representatives, Mr. Bradley, Mr. Cummings, and Mr. Payne, and say, this is hurting our school systems. This is hurting teachers. We want teachers to have higher education. We want them to have doctorates. We have a teacher right now that just got her doctorate. You're darn right she's not going to get paid for it. She won't get paid for that doctorate. And that's Julie Cassidy out of Oakleaf, and she just graduated with a doctorate. So it's wrong. We need you to address it because I believe it's coming from the state and not coming from us. My other change to my lesson plan was with uh, Mr. Nichols, 149 teachers over it. I don't think Mr. Davis would let us get away with that, or I don't think he did that, but I'd like to know where that originates from. I have a feeling that the formula was, was stuck to pretty closely by the senior staff at, at Clay, Clay County. He, Mr. Nichols is absolutely right. I will advocate for teachers all the time. If it's up to me, no one ever gets cut. That's why I said, don't, you know, it's like, you know, don't put me on the insurance committee because everybody gets insurance. Um, oh, I think I'm on. No, anyway. Um, <laughs> but anyway, you know, that that's that's the truth. It's kind of an irony that it's um, library month or, you know, media month. I felt like throwing up and I'm sure I have a lot of uh, media specialists who is throwing things at the TV right now um, because I don't really care what every county does in Clay County. I care about what we do. And I will always moan the fact that we've had to do that. Um, but my original speech had to do with allocations and railing about them, but Mr. Davis and Mr. Broski today did the right thing. He did the right thing by teachers, and they should be congratulated. Um, he, did the, he represented you well. He did the right thing um, with making sure that our teachers are going to have a, a position that I am assured of, and I've seen it, and I, I believe them. So, rip, that's what happened to the original speech. <laughs> now, um, the, the last thing, you know, the CCA updates has to do with where the teachers are and, and from one month to the next month, and, and I have to tell you, um, never would I thought that I would have been consumed in a whole month over a state statute called HB 11. HB 11 is a bill to decertify teachers' unions in the state um, and support unions and nurses' uh, unions. And the only thing that it's not about is police, fire, and corrections. I almost got physically sick when I listened to our state representatives talking about because police, fire, and corrections are important. Oh. And teachers not. And that was said in committee by a state representative. We should have every school board m member on the telephone speaking to our state people about how insulting this entire bill is. Just because a union doesn't have 50% doesn't mean they don't have 90% support. Let me equate it to what politicians understand. Mr. Davis won the primary with 19,000 votes in Clay County. That means, by this logic, he should have 9,500 people that contributed to his campaign. He wish he did. <laughs> but he had 19,000 votes of support. I'm picking on you because you've just been elected, so. And, and we had this discussion. That is the same thing you're asking them. There are reasons people don't belong to a union. And I have never been a salesperson for the union. 
I've never gone and asked teachers to be accountable until this month. This consumed my life and did no benefit for the teachers and teaching of children in Clay County. Do you really want to negotiate with 2,700 people individually? Do you really want to grieve 2,700 people individually? It's ludicrous. It's a political game. And I'm asking my school board to call those people who are your colleagues and speak up for the employees of Clay County. I had better things to do with my life this month than worry about HB 11. I really did. You know, we have teachers out there who have elderly parents. I think I've had five members this year, five members in the last month who lost a parent or a child. A parent or a child. I'd rather be dealing with this than dealing with some pol political hack who decided to take this and throw it out there and pretend that teachers don't support their union. They do. They do support their union, and I think what we did in the election showed so. If you think that was done by only 50% of the teachers, you're hardly mistaken. Now, the CCA is not going to be affected by this law. I don't care what happens to it, because I did ask the teachers to step up, and they did, because they're angry. They're angry that they've been manipulated over a decertification bill that should have never seen the light of day. We're working as a partnership with you. We're working, and we have a constitutional right to collective bargain. That's in the Constitution of Florida. When the teachers walked out in 1968, we gave up the right to strike for the right to bargain. So if you take away our rights to bargain, does that mean we get the right to strike back? Ask your legislators that question. Ask them that. And I'm saying all this because I know it's not you guys, but I need your voice. It's like the other bill about AC teachers and taking it away from them, the right to have another contract. You want it by performance. It's performance. They scored highly effective. Why wouldn't you reward them? So the bill is going to pass, no doubt about it, because we just don't like you having that either. Doing everything to destroy public education will come back and get you. Ask me. I will have a private conversation of what private schools did to the island of Bermuda. I will have that conversation with you, and it's not a pretty sight. Again, I'm asking you to talk to your legislators, to stand up for your employees of Clay County so we can get back to the business, because I don't intend to do this for another month. It's done. We're over it. I do want 60%. You hear that, everybody out there streaming? Because I'm going after 60% because that's in my, in my wheelhouse at the moment. And God help us when we get there. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Piva. Our next speaker is Ms. Teresa Dixon with an update from our CESPA group. Hi, Teresa Dixon, uh, president of CESPA. Um, first of all, I just wanted to start out by saying ditto on everything she said on HB 11. I couldn't have even come close to doing such an eloquent job. So I don't think anything else more needs to be said. Um, and I know nobody on this board wants to take over my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd be glad to hand it to you if you do. <laughs> Challenge. A um, few things I wanted to talk about. Number one was the unassigned list came out. Um, thank you, Ms. Corey and Mr. Broski, for getting that to me promptly. I appreciate it. We did have a, a few employees listed on the unassigned list, um, which is really relatively standard for support employees. Um, I have very high hopes that the vast majority of them will find a place to land before everything settles. Um, and I'm also 
happy to say that that list was relatively small. So I know you worked very hard to make sure that you were only cutting who you absolutely needed to cut. Um, the other thing was um, I wanted to thank board members and the superintendent for the work that you did going up to Tallahassee and lobbying on behalf of the testing situation. Um, you've had union members from across the state that have been there all through this legislative session speaking on behalf of this. And this is just another example of how the union and the school boards and school superintendents can join together and link arms on an issue and we can work together and we can get this done. We can get this done. We will make a difference. Um, those are some positive things. We're ready to start bargaining here really soon. Our bargaining chair is currently at a bargaining conference. When he comes back, be expecting to have the announcements. I see your announcement on, on, your, on the agenda for tonight, um, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I hope we'll be able to come to the table and, and put across some interesting um, proposals and reach an agreement as quickly as possible. Um, one other thing is I did on a more negative point of view I just want to talk about evaluations we're continuing to see evaluations with support employees where and and uh, Superintendent Davis and I talked about it I I passed all of you my proposals and my thoughts on evaluations and th some things I'd like to get to work on I know it's been crazy right now but I, I do hope we can work very soon um, on on those issues um, an employee should never get a mark on their evaluation if that administrator has not called them in and discussed it with them. An evaluation and its school board policy, even its policy contract states that an evaluation is for the purpose of improving performance. It's not a gotcha. And that's what it, it, it's turning out to be. Over and over and over I'm being contacted by employees that are saying, you know, they wrote this comment, they did this, they said this, they marked me down on this. And I said, well, have they ever talked to you about it? No. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't happen like that. You need to give that employer the opportunity. Call them. If they're doing something they shouldn't do, you need, as, as an administrator, they should be told you can't do this and offer, given an opportunity to correct that behavior and it not just show up on evaluation. And that's an ongoing problem. I don't know if that's a training issue with administrators or what we need to do to resolve that, but that is an ongoing problem. It's not a new problem and it just continues. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to mention was I saw the appointed employees list, 83 pages of support employees that are have been appointed for next year, thank you. 82 pages of instructional employees that have been appointed, thank you. Um, I have one concern with that, and, and I don't know if this is something we can get together and work through. If I don't know if there is a resolution to it, but I just want to throw it out there. If you notice on our, our appointed employees, our bus drivers and monitors are never included in this, this list of appointments. They never get their appointments until in the summer because they go through that in-service training and so on like that. They always get a letter that says pending employment or pending, um, uh, 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 yeah. Anyway, the, um, my thought with that is we're struggling so much to get bus drivers and you leave them that dead time in the summertime to go and look for another job because they don't know if they're going to have a job coming up in the next school year. It's, I, I hope this is something we can think about and work on. How can we accomplish this in a more timely manner so that before our bus drivers leave for the summer break, they know they're coming back, that they have a job waiting for them. I think that that would, that would help out with some of the turnover rates just something I, I was hoping that maybe we could work on um, and that is about my list for now thank you thank you miss Dixon and I just want you to note the superintendent has been taking notes through all of this so I know that he will get a, a summary back to the board with resolution or suggestions on on whatever our next agenda item is the superintendent's update and presentation and he assured me it would be brief tonight <laughs> yes ma'am and thank you um, before we get started uh, last month I had the opportunity to um, 
identify champions of change. And that was through the insight survey to identify our top quartile of our principals who have um, demonstrated the ability to create some of the, the one of the, the best culture, not only in the in the county, but also throughout the nation. So this month, I'd like to move on to um, continue this process by identifying a teacher who has done so many great things in our community and so many great things for, for our organization. So recently, a civics teacher at Green Cove Junior High School was awarded the Military Veterans Volunteer of the Year Award for Clay County by the Northeast Florida Women's Veterans Organization. She was also selected as the w, as a VFW Post of 1988 Military Teacher of the Year. So I wanted to recognize this individual because this type of positive role model behaviors is what our youth need today in our schools. It allows our, our, as a role model for our citizens to be actively engaged in the process of our school system in our community. And this is an example of one of our educational leaders going above and beyond in the outside, inside and outside of the classroom, not only for her students, but also for the greater community. And this night, tonight, I'd like to recognize my champion of change to be Robin Brandon from Green Cove Junior High School. If we also have um, uh, Ms. Halter come up, the, pr the principal as well, let's congratulate her for her hard work. said Ola Mills some of some of us don't know who Ola Mills is but that was when we were kids going back to take pictures and they had to set up uh, but nonetheless uh, to to address um, to address Mrs. Piva which usually Miss Lee Miss Piva um, and also Miss Dixon I want you to know regardless of what House Bill 11 states or says uh, I, I'm with you and I'm on your team um, we will continue to work collectively, we will continue to work collaboratively in order to create the best working conditions for the staff that you support, and that is exactly every employee's right to do so if they want to join or, or be a member. What we want them to be, to be is a member of Clay County Schools, and uh, we appreciate your partnership in that, and I look forward to our continued work and continued efforts. Tonight, I just want to take a, 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 a minute. Thank you. Tonight, I want to take a minute to talk about, um, you know, efficient relationships and, and how we create relationships that will allow us to move forward collectively, no different than what we do with um, our bodies who represent teachers and support staff, but how I focus to create one of the, the most important relationship is between the superintendent and the board. And um, in Elevate Clay, one of the first initiatives was for me to look and unpack how the relationships exist between the superintendent and the board because coming in to be transparent and to be, and to be honest there was a fragmented approach in reference to how we move forward and from a perception from internal personnel external personnel and community about how the superintendent and the board move forward and how they made decisions and were the decisions always based on kids and did it really protect the integrity of the system so ultimately my expected outcomes is to really build a relationship with the board that really creates a team approach and the one that really uh, that signifies an effective systems for communicating every single day day in and day out one that really repairs the comfort you know confrontational relationship that once existed and then finally for us to to really um, model the professionalism through our conversations through our through our actions that really are centered around students adults and systems within this organization so when you look at the relationship with the board there has there has to be an objective of what you're trying to accomplish and, and I'm sorry for the for the gray color but there's so many the ultimately the the ultimate goal for everything that we do as a superintendent of the board is really to focus on student achievement but there's more than there's so many aspects that that circulate that student achievement and they all these dimensions and components have to be truly working simultaneously in order for us to be efficient and reliable in organization and that's one where the superintendent of the board creates a vision for our expectations what is our strategic plan what are we trying to accomplish how are we holding each other accountable for me to make certain that I have systems in place in reference to accountability for evaluations accountability and that's for administrations and teachers and support staff do we 
we have a data warehouse system? Do we, do we work efficiently with making sure we have the right curricula for our students? Do we have the correct pathways and academies in this organization to really help the 21st learner be competitive not only locally but also nationally? And then looking at what we do from a policy standpoint, do we have policies that act as levers that allow us to be successful with it within the school system? And then looking at community partnerships. We talk about community partnerships and working as a team, and it's my job to work collectively with the, the entire board to make sure that we do we respect, draw on and respect the backgrounds and abilities and skill set that each of these individuals have, and that how I can leverage their abilities and their relationships they have with community members, with, with legislators, um, with internal um, staff members and external staff members, so that we really keep a pulse of what's working, what's not, and what we can do differently in this organization. And ultimately, that all comes to building a positive relationship between me and the board, whereas we can have an interconnection through decision-making, problem-solving, critical thinking, evaluations, and also then and ultimately looking at refining our practice so that we can move forward. So areas of superintendent that I will focus on with the board is to make sure that I hold myself accountable to uh, communicate effectively, bless you, to recognize communicational pathways with, with management function between me and the board, to speak on, for us to work collectively to speak on behalf of support staff, leaders, teachers, and constituents, and for us to have a two-way communication cycle where it's not always from me to them or them to me, but it's really one of a problem-solving model where we have the courageous conversations and honest conversations about where we are and where we're going in order to create focused dialogue centered around the work that we have in Clay County and ultimately for have uh, continue to have engaged in diplomatic conversations not only in front of the entire community at our board meetings but also one-on-one -on -one through through our phone conversations and also at our agenda reviews in order to be efficient so I wanted to let the the public know there's a there's a, a, a really a new system about how I can the superintendent communicates with the board we know that the first Thursday of the month we have our school board meeting and that's a face-to-face -face streamed live and I know that um, Jerry Paulin sent me something about we have some uh, initial um, uh, the, it wasn't streaming live uh, initially, but we got it going and, and moving forward. But it, ultimately, 14 to 12 days before, really 14 to days before the school board me meeting happens, there's a release of an agenda item. And prior to that, me and the school, me and the chair work collectively to go through every item. We set the agenda collectively, and then that is released to the to the board for them to, to review three, two or three or four days before we go to agenda review. And in that agenda review, that's usually around 10 to, to 11, could be 12 days prior to the board meeting, I go through every agenda item with the board. And that's so they truly understand why the agenda item exists, how it aligns strategic plan, how does it impact our, our, our employees and how do we financial and how, what's the financial makeup and how do we uh, to make sure that, that we have the fundings in order to do so and how does it ultimately align to our strategic plan. After that board agenda meeting, then the school board and myself, our school board has the opportunity within you know another 10 days to ask questions of me or staff to really ha do their homework, in which they do, in order to better understand the items so they know exactly how to vote and make a stance in reference for the, the, the holistic approach from our county. And then seven days prior to, um, to our meeting, we have, we, we post the agenda items for all of our constituents to review, and then that provides an opportunity for conversation through constituents to the board through me in order to make informed decisions and finally we get to a part where we have um, uh, four to six days prior to the board meeting where the superintendent can have any follow-up and all this follow-up is through electronics through email through face-to-face -face. and then ultimately we have the the next system is the incidents at schools every day that we have an incident at school I let our board know holistically it's not which board which you know not which member in district they're in but everyone understands what happens every single day so the board hears it first and we don't hear it through social media or media outlets in addition any pressing concern that uh, that is in community or throughout the state that's either a phone call or electronic communication as well and also anytime that a, an email bless you that an email is sent from a constituent through the board or to the board they send it to me and we problem solve together to release that and then finally anything that the board submits to me I try to respond within 24 and 48 72 hours in order to give them accurate information to make the decisions within this community and get back with our stakeholders so all this to say is that it's uh, the relationship that I've created with me and the board it's about team, it's about respect, it's about inspiration, and it's about encouraging us to be effective uh, in order to make decisions in this organization. I'm sorry, I hope it was short last time. <laughs>
Okay. <laughs> All right, that's it. Sure. Okay. Last time. All right. Thank well, you. thank you. Thank you for that update. Um, and and the process that he did just put up there I think we all um, appreciate all the information that we get we are hearing about incidents from our superintendent before the news so we appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> greatly appreciate it all right so now we're going into our discussion agenda and the first item on our agenda is D1 consider moving the July 6 regular meeting to June 29th due to the July 4th holiday I'll entertain a motion so Move moved approval. second I have a motion by Mrs. Bola, uh, second by Ms. Kilhausen. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. Our next item, I'm going to go out of order. I think it would help our conversation on the Synovia if we address the school board attorney contract first. So the next item will be D5, school board attorney contract. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. I'll second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon, a second by Ms. Gilhausen. Um, any discussion? Nobody has discussion? <laughs> well, I certainly do. <laughs> I, um, I'm glad to see that Mr. Daggett has um, agreed to our contract and our terms that we went back with. But I am just disappointed that um, we didn't receive full disclosure before we actually got into the negotiation process. And I understand that um, the judgeship that he applied for was during when we offered our contract to the first candidate. Uh, but when we did offer him the contract, I felt at that point he probably should have let us know that there is a possibility that he will be selected by the governor as a, a judge. And, I mean, we won't know that for, you know, a couple of months. So um, I guess I just want to go on record saying I'm disappointed that, you know, we didn't have full disclosure from Mr. Daggett. Anybody have? You want to just take the vote? Everybody's fine with what's what? I, I just want okay. to say this. I mean, I, the record speaks for itself. Uh, he was not my first choice, but then um, I voted to uh, approve him. When he uh, submitted the contract uh, that he and Mr. Broski had discussed, uh, we uh, lowered the salary a little bit. We put some stipulations in there that things that weren't agreeable to us and uh, my feeling is uh, you know it's public record that he was not my first choice but I feel like um, that um, he needs to come in knowing that uh, we are looking forward to having an attorney he's one of I think 12 that's up for this judgeship um, so that's pretty good odds for us so that's 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 the way I feel about it um, um, we are in need of an attorney. We this is drug on long enough, so we we need to get us an attorney in here. That's I just the way I feel. That. I'm just concerned that in two or three months from now, if he is well, one of the finalists, we're going to be you know we're going to be going through this again. So well, then maybe we would have to go back to Plan B. All right. Well, um, had take, something he I'm wanted sorry. to add. I'm sorry. Through the chair. I I believe there was some contact late this afternoon. Mr. Broski, do you have an update in reference to? Mr. Goddick did not receive the judgeship. Okay, so it's already been so, so Sarah, where you go? All right. Okay. Well, if there's any other discussion, no? All right, let's take a vote. Um, I have a motion by Ms. Bola. No. Oops, wait a second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon. Uh, second by Ms. Gilhausen. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries 5-0.
Madam Chair, I would just like to thank Mr. Sykes for staying with us through this process. I think Absolutely. he tried to leave us like back in January or right. something. <laughs> he's kind of been hanging on. I think November. he said he wasn't going to miss us at one point as well. <laughs> oh, he's going to miss us like a sore tooth. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Mr. Daggett uh, will, be, will be starting um, April 27th, and hopefully there'll be a day or two, Mr. Sykes, where you can provide him with whatever information you have I, as a turnover. I, I'd be happy to, and, and I've already, I think I've expressed it. I've talked to Ms. Bush about it, and I've talked to Dave about it, and Mr. Broski about it. I mean, when he wants to talk to me, I'll happily walk him through, and whatever I can do to help out, I'm here to facilitate a success. Well, we appreciate all your help. Thank you. Thank you. Our next item is item D1A, discuss and reverse previous decision to rescind all funding for the Synovia Solutions Agreement. This was an item put on the agenda by Ms. Bola, but before we discuss it, we do have several cards. Our first card is Ms. Wanda Clymer, followed by Mr. James Bryant. I'm Wanda Clymer. My address is on file. We seem to have had a miscommunication last month, and I'd like to clear that up. Never, ever did I say I would not use that GPS system. I just said it was a danger to my students, and the only thing that I really disagree with is checking my students in on that bus. So for someone to say, I'm going to sue you and then everybody fold, I am not happy with that, but I kind of understand it because, see, I may lose my job, and if I do, God bless me, but I'm about to throw some people under that bus who threw me under the bus last month. After our meeting last month, administrators were outside, and my name was mentioned as someone who just didn't want to do her darn job. Well, I'm sorry. I show up every day not one day missing unless I am so badly sick that I cannot sit on that bus. I do my job with pride. There is not one student on my bus that does not love me and vice versa. Now, with that being said, on the other hand, if that GPS system was worth its weight in gold right now, there's one driver that wouldn't be driving anymore. Because that situation I told you about where I stopped putting my students in because someone passed me, that was another doggone bus driver. I don't have time to be politically correct here, so the country's about to come out in me, and I can't help it. But when he went around me, and he's still driving a bus, he's had two accidents. He's done a U-turn in the dark of morning on 220 at Night Box Road, and if you've ever driven that road, by grammys, you know how busy that road is. And he's still driving a bus today. What? So, please, please understand. I don't mind signing in. I don't mind doing my pre-trip. But when it comes to my students being at risk, oh, you can bet I am going to be very loud and proud to defend my students. And we, you know what, we've ordered 19 buses with AC. And by the way, thank you for that because Superintendent before wouldn't have given us an AC for nothing in this world. He'd have watched us sweat and die before he did. So thank you for everything you've done for us. I really do thank you. But at the same time, when you order those 19 buses, instead of renting a GPS system, and you know we have an out because it's, it's Agenda A or Amended A, whatever you want to call it. I can't even think right this minute. But when you order those 19 buses with those ACs, you can also order a GPS system put on that, and you're not renting that dang thing from nobody. You're buying it. You're not paying a rental agreement to anyone. So those new 19 buses will come with rear view camera, AC, uh, cameras inside the bus where you can see inside and outside the bus, and they, will, they could also come with a GPS system that would not cost us this much money because not only are we renting the system, but then we have to pay to have airtime for Verizon. So we're spending more money than what was originally put out there, and, you know, we've got other things. Like I said before, I just want our priorities to be straight. 
We've got other things, more important things that be, need to be done right now. You can still put a GPS on there if that's what you want to call it, tracking system, whatever. Because for one, I'm not scared for you to follow me on anything because I never go where I'm not supposed to be. And if I do, it's to a bathroom somewhere and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clymer. Our next, our next speaker is James Bryant, followed by Mr. Keith Nichols. My name is James Bryant. My address is on file. I'm not only an employee, but also a proud parent of a tenderfoot scout who's come here to see what a school board meeting is like as part of his ranking and earnings. Um, but this is also the reason why I go to school or go to work and take kids to go to school every day. I get reminded all the time that it's always about the kids' safety. As a parent, I drive the bus. I get up at 4.30 in the morning. My wife is a monitor now. She goes in. She's on a bus by 5 a.m. every morning. The only way I know this child gets on his bus is either I take him to school or I have to wait on something like here comes the bus to know that it's come in. It is one of the best things that I've seen that's come out of the whole GPS program. I wish we would use it a little bit more often. When I was on a regular ed route, I had my junior high and my high school, I voluntarily had them put it in and recommended that they use their ID badge. When they didn't have their ID badge, I showed them how to use Here Comes the Bus. They downloaded the app, they had their bus pass with them. They scanned it every day, had no problem getting on and off, and I had over 90% or better compliancy with it. They first wanted to balk at it. I told them that every good paying job that I ever had, whether it be AOL, Vistar, Comcast, that we had RFI chips required a badge into the door. Even if we were at Vistar, if you want to get into the main building before hours, the, their gate to get into the parking lot required you to badge in so the gate would open up automatically and it was done by the IT department that gave you access. What I'm saying is for me to have the peace of mind to know that my kid is getting ready to go to junior high next year and for me to be able to drive my bus is to know that he is on and off safely and at the house. Now I do have an app that allows me to track him on his phone but one day he left it at school and it upset my wife to no end because we thought our, G, our GPS is not accurate. It showed his phone out in the woods and it was actually left in the school and it wasn't updated. But we had to call the transportation department to ask the uh, school bus driver who was a sub at the time because there was a one or two many people that had not showed up or that was out sick. And the, they actually had to tell my wife finally to calm her down that yes, he made it home safely. And it just took a little while longer. Where if she had this and the actual driver was using it, if we had a little bit more than just one, there was what, one school that was actually assigned to use it? If we had a little bit wider or two? Okay, we have, I don't, more than 20 schools and more than that with kids that actually have access to it. I just said my kids that were using it, they understood that if they wanted a good paying job, it was required. If they didn't have it as an employee, they would have to go back home and go get it. We don't do that with our kids. We can punch them in and get them in, but they understood, hey, guess what? This is something that I'm gonna have to do in the future. Why not learn how to do it now? Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Thank you for your son coming also. Our next speaker is Mr. Keith Nichols, followed by Ms. Rebecca Smith. My name's Keith Nichols, and my address hasn't changed since the last time I was up here. Uh, I want, before I get started, I just wanted to say, Mr. Davis, thank you. I did get that information today. Uh, just an update for the board members to know about this. Uh, Eric Snow didn't give it to me. Mr. Davis did. Uh, we have, currently have 253 buses on our roster, and only 44 of them have uh, are in warranty right now. And that was just my initial numbers that I came up with, which means 82.61% of your buses are not under warranty right now. And I didn't know if y'all knew that. Now, one of the things, and I want to hit on something Miss Priva did. I told you all before that the GPS system grades us every 30 seconds. It gives us a score of 1 to 100. Well, in this time that we've had it, not one single driver has scored below 92% on the GPS. So I'm wondering, where is our highly effective bonus? 
and I'm not going to be too long here because I've already sent you all two new emails. You all have seen my, you know, my proposals, my, my perceptions on this stuff, and I hope that my two emails will provide you all some talking points tonight. And so other than that, I just want to say, you know, uh, dig deeper. I've already told you all that. Do you need to dig deeper? Go to the numbers and look for it. Uh, now this one, Mr. Davis can explain to you. It's a little comment that goes, we get to the peak together or we don't get there at all. And he'll tell you where that comes from. Thank you, Mr. Nichols. Our next speaker is Ms. Rebecca Smith. My name's Rebecca Smith. My address is on file. I'm speaking to you this evening. CESPA, Director of Transportation. We have been here over and over, over and over, over and over, over and over, and we have got to solve this so we can move on. With that being said, majority of your drivers have no problems with having a GPS. Majority of your drivers don't mind you following them. We want to be held accountable. And I think, like we said in Mr. Kemp's office when we had that meeting, it came out 92% out of 100 was doing what they're supposed to do. And I was wondering, was we expecting different or what? I don't know. But it took $547,000 to find it out. I've heard that other districts has got these GPSs. I understand the need for them because we do need to hold people accountable that's out there doing things they shouldn't do. We should be able to know where our buses are in the event. I mean, this is a very big asset issue. We buy these buses and they're not cheap. But like Miss Carol Sutter said once or twice, we haven't lost a bus yet. Jeez. This board is gonna make its decision regardless. That's what we elect you to do. We elect you to do the right thing. You have to come to that conclusion. What is the right thing? Is it right to... Uh, oh. If I paid 547000 half a million dollars on something, I got it better work. As a citizen of Clay County, I think I have a right to think and expect it should work. Mr. Kemp has assured me that if it passes this board or whatever happens with this board, because you're going to make your decision, he's going to hold their feet to the fire. He's going to make sure it works. If it doesn't, at the end of the contract, we're going to get rid of it because we're, you know, we're not going to pay for something that ain't going to work. But as a bus driver, I must emphasize this ridership program does not need to be in place. It is a safety issue. Not too many of your drivers really want to do this because it is. May I have an extra minute because I wasn't expecting this to come on agenda. Can I have some time? Yes. With that being said, we don't want to do this because we feel like it puts at a risk. Cindy Hall was out on Highway 17 last week. She had a concrete truck bearing down on her. She was, she was a stop. She stopped. He's bearing down on her. This cement truck, according to one climber that was behind her watching and observing this, this sucker was bouncing like a basketball, coming at her, bearing down on her. She come across the radio and holler, oh, my God, y'all got to do something about these drivers out here on Highway 17. You just about hit City Hall. I was told by these drivers, both drivers, that if that 
truck would have hit that bus, we would have fatalities. This is for real. This is not a joke. This is not a ploy about against being GPS problems. This is for real. That if she was utilizing that system at that time, God only knows what would have happened. It's, it's dangerous, and I'm asking this board to consider that. Payroll, you know, payroll's been a real hot topic in transportation. With that being said, the system has got problems. Mr. Kemp's aware of this. It, it, it has. We all are aware. There's some problems with the system. It can be fixed. I pray to God. It can be fixed. But with that being said, when you're messing with people's paycheck, I don't want to hear anybody tell me, well, we'll get it fixed, but it will be two weeks from now. So I worked here. I waited two weeks to get that pay, only to find out I've been slid here, messed up here, a hundred something dollars, and I'm supposed to wait another two weeks to get it, a month? That's unacceptable. How would you like to have to wait one month? Now, some people have no problem with the system for payroll. If payroll wants to use it, fine, let them use it. What we're asking is that we're able to do our paper. If those of us who want to do a paper payroll sheet, let us do that, because when that thing blows up, if it does, I got something to fall back on. Because what payroll is only what they can fall back on is what your normal day is. Because they don't know what field trips, um, you know, there's a lot of dynamics of not knowing what you've done. Did Was there a breakdown on the road? Did it take you long to get, get back to the compound? You just don't know. But but this is some serious thing when you mess around with people's pay. People's got children that's got needs and needs medicine. You know, Clay Electric likes to be paid. So I just decisions you make affect people's lives. There's consequences. There's a mortgage, yeah. Hallelujah on that one. But please take consideration what we're trying to say. We're not saying that we hate GPSs. We we think this this majority of your bus drivers feel this system is inadequate and it has a lot of issues we don't mind you tracking us mr kemp already told me he tracked me i asked him if he learned anything he said you're you're good you're a good driver <laughs> i said did you expect anything different but uh i'm just saying honestly y'all do the right thing here whatever it is protect your children in clay county because that's what we're here for Educate them and protect them. And then do right by your people. That's all we've ever asked for. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smith. All right, I'll bring this back to the board. As I said, Mrs. Bola placed this item back on the agenda um, to discuss and reverse previous decisions to rescind all funding for the Sanofi Solutions Agreement. I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to move to reverse the board's previous decision to rescind all funding for the Synovia Solutions GPS system. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Mrs. Bola, a second by Ms. Gilhausen. Um, discussion? Yes, if I may. Yes. Um, since I brought it forward, um, I have to agree, first of all, with Ms. Becky, the ridership program. I spoke of last time. I don't need to go into any more detail on that. I know the dangers of that program at this point. This needs to be a brand new rollout. But why did I go into it further and deeper in those terms? Um, I spoke to Dr. Kemp regarding the actual savings, and Ms. Kerkus, I believe you requested the printout that we all got. Basically, it's been a savings of $152,939.83. When we're looking at not having a program at all, and when we voted the last time, I was understanding that at my vote was determined based on the fact that we would go with another system. And in fact, Ms. Becky, I spoke to you about that after the meeting. I said, we need a system. We need a system of some sort in place. And when I did make that vote, I made it with the hope of acquiring an alternative. However, with the non-compete clause of the contract, which was not previously discussed by this board, that would not allow us to procure another system for at least another year. And if we were to do this right, it would go even longer, incurring the costs I've already mentioned that we've saved, in addition to 
other costs, perhaps, with additional gas, whatever. Um, most importantly, following the last meeting, I was contacted by parents and students. And I was also contacted by bus drivers, wondering why we were getting rid of a system which provides reliability, efficiency, and safety. And the here come the bus, here comes the bus. I realize not thousands of people had signed up for that, but that specifically is the point that the gentleman made earlier. Um, and bottom line, the most ingre important ingredient, and this came back to me in my school board training last week, is our students and their safety. Attorney, um, but that's a, if the majority rules, I can still count to three, but I would love to see the new attorney have some input on this. Uh, I think uh, the man has a lot of knowledge and I would like to know what he thinks and um, about this contract. Well, my only question, I guess, to your point would be, first of all, I appreciate the reconsideration that the board is giving this item. Um, my vote at our last meeting was a reflection of the legal opinion that we received from our board attorney. Um, so my question to you, Ms. Stuttered, would be, I, I guess I don't understand why the legal opinion would be important for you going forward if it wasn't when we voted on it the last case. I'd, or rather, did you not, I'd rather not go into that, but I would love to have the new attorney's opinion on this, this contract. Thank you. Well, I, I appreciate the reconsideration of this because I feel like it was um, a poor representation of um, our commitment to fulfill a contract that we committed ourselves to. Um, I think it sets a poor precedent going forward with um, whatever contracts we enter into if we, um, against the advisement of our legal counsel, are willing to break a contract and not hold up our end of the deal. So. Um, like you said, there have been con there have been issues that we've had with the system since it was implemented. Um, I think our department has worked hard with Synovia to try to rectify those things. I think that um, more can be done, but um, I, I just think that ultimately this decision comes down to a legal decision. And as far as GPS goes, I think I've heard everyone say, whether it's SESPA, us here at the board, um, that we believe GPS is important. Um, this was the, the system that we contracted with. I think it's to our advantage that we make it work for us. Well, um, you know, this, this gets back, Ms. Gilhausen, as to the original vote on this. It came to us the third time before it was ever approved by this board, and it was finally approved. So, you know, I'm a big girl. Let's go on with it. But then I expect it to work, and it has been a disaster in a lot of respects. But, you know, if this board wants to continue with it, fine. But, you know, it's $547,000, but... Uh, I'll just have to rely that Dr. Kemp's going to make hold their feet to the fire and let's get this thing working right. And uh, uh, I've, I'm not at all pleased with this uh, time that the bus drivers are, are talking about that it's taking them to check these kids in. I'm worried about the kids and the safety. Ms. Bell, I think I heard you say you rode on the bus and that that... And you I know, agreed with the ridership. I don't yeah, like that part of this program. We've, and that's we've not got something to, required. I, you know, I'm, I am really going to insist that we do something to improve that. Because I, I mean, I can count to three. I think I know how the vote's going to go here. But I want something done about it because th the first time one of these children gets hurt, I, I don't want it to be because they were sitting there looking at the screen. You, I'm, I'm really scared of that. Okay. Ms. Condon, did you have anything you'd like to add? Yeah. So my comments um, haven't changed from the last meeting. Um, I made no secret about the disappointments that I've had with the system and I, the good things that I think are about the system. Last week, um, Mrs. Bola and Mrs. Caracas and I attended legislative days with Florida School Board Association in Tallahassee, and um, I was able to ask some other school boards if they have GPSs and if they use them. and. Um, they looked at me like I had three heads when that if we even would not have them on our on our buses and and how they worked now they did not have the same system as us so I think that there is room for improvement um, but um, the, the biggest concern that I have is that um, basically by putting putting our 
payment for the, the system on a five-year plan is kind of like um, getting a payday loan. And when you get a payday loan, someone else owns that loan. Well, Synovia doesn't own this debt. They have their money. There are banks out there that specialize in government loans because they're secured, because a government is going to pay their bills. And my understanding is that there's a different company that owns this loan. So will they come back after their money? You betcha. And that's why I voted the way that I did last time. And here's why. Because $547,000 of capital funding over a five-year period is reasonable when you get something for it in return. $547,000 that we lose in a lawsuit comes out of the general fund, which means less of something else in our regular operating budget. And that for me is not easy um, to swallow and not a decision that I think is fiscally responsible to the taxpayers of Clay County or the state of Florida because a lot of our money comes from the state of Florida. That being said, um, I suggested um, some possible solutions for the ridership. Um, last time I even had a letter to the editor and written that said that I was trying to data track our children, put chips in them. I'm not um, trying to, <laughs> to put chips in them. I merely mentioned that you can put a, an RFID badge just like, um, I'm sorry, Mr. Bryant said in an ID badge, you can badge magnetically badge into a building, you can magnetically badge onto a bus and it recognizes within that geofence that that card is there. It's not foolproof. Someone else could have your card and it looks like you're where you are. Um, and we know we have some um, really smart students that would probably figure out how to give somebody their card and go home with someone else. But hopefully those are few and far between. But that's why my position has not changed on it. I agree that it's a legal decision. Um, and I valued Mr. Sykes' opinion on this. And, and so I, frankly, I don't want to see our district sued. All right, that leaves me. Well, first of all, um, this did come to us September, October of 2013. We voted no on it. Um, came to us again. We voted no again. And then it came to us May or June of 2016, and it was a 3-2 vote. Um, the majority of the board voted to go forward with it. At the time, there were a lot of questions. We were supposed to be piggybacking on St. Lucie County, and it was presented to us that so we had a 30-day cancellation policy. And um, this contract is one of the worst contracts that I've ever seen, having this 90-day clause, having the ability to sell this to a third-party bank. I've spoken with our purchasing department. We don't have any other contracts that allow that. Um, and, and never have allowed it. Why this contract has been allowed, why we accepted this, why this was approved is just beyond me. And I would love for somebody to dig deep, as Mr. Nichols says, and find out what the deal is here, who's, whose friend this is, whose relative this is, why this has gone forward, and come back to us so many times because there are so many other good companies out there that don't require what this contract has required. And um, I'm so disappointed that this was approved and, and reviewed by our attorney, approved by our last superintendent and our board chairman. Um, this, it's just horrible. I do believe that the addendum A does give us an out for it. I don't believe for one minute that the lawsuit would come to 500000 I think we're premature. We have gotten a letter from Synovia telling us what fund this comes out of. Who are they to tell us where this comes from? We know it comes out of capital dollars. We don't need a contracted company to tell us our finances. We don't need to tell us that we're not going to be able to track the aggressive driving of our bus drivers. We know what this was intended for. I felt that the letter was somewhat insulting. And I think it's Synovia's problem if they chose to sell this to a third-party bank without having the finances to finance this correctly like they should have. But I think we're premature. I agree with Mrs. Studdard. Let's, we've got 90 days. Let's let and see if we receive some kind of letter from them and let our new attorney review it. And um, at, that one, at that time, make a decision. Do we want to rescind this? Do we want to reverse what we did last month or not? I think 
the scare tactic from Synovia, and even our own attorney, uh, no offense, Mr. Sykes, but the letter our own attorney sent us, I felt was somewhat out of place. I reviewed the contract again and again, and I saw the letter that Mr. Sykes sent to Synovia Solutions, which now I realize, after receiving further documents from purchasing, was in a request from Synovia that they were selling this contract to the third-party bank. And that's why, I don't know if you have your paperwork with you, Ms. Bull is looking at me like I've got two heads here. You um, said Mr. Sykes had sent a letter. I yeah, it's in it your backup. Mr. If you read your backup, it's in your I backup. I it was Mr. Davis who had sent the letter. Mr. Sykes, if you read your email um, right after the Synovia letter, it's a letter from Mr. Sykes to me, been. copy from the board, right, telling me that I could go get my own attorney. And Mr. Sykes is the school board attorney, so when the school board had asked to have the superintendent send the letter, you know, Mr. Sykes was the one directed to draft it. The May other letter that, that I'm referencing to is in our packet on the backup. May I respond to that? One moment, please. It's this one dated July 2016 mm -hmm. to Synovia or to the bank that, um, and he was, they requested it from, so Mr. Sykes did what was requested. He sent that letter along with um, paperwork from the chairman and the signed contract. There were four things that they did request. Um, so I, I just don't agree with us moving forward without even receiving any formal documentation from Synovia other than, you know, the last correspondence we got, which was not a letter of demand or any legal documentation saying that they were going to sue us. So I think at this point, let's let our new attorney come in and get his opinion on this and see what Synovia sends us. At may that I, point, may I briefly respond, we can go though? forward with it. So... Yes. All right. I, I interviewed all of the pertinent department heads and I, even the superintendent. And I asked specifically if anybody was prepared to state under oath that the funds are not available to the school board and no one was prepared to sign that affidavit under oath. Nobody. Nobody was second. required to other than the it's superintendent. It's required on the contract. The superintendent was sending a letter, a sworn statement that the board had rescinded funding. No, that's, that's, but that's not was. what's required. You, either, when you look at the contract, you have to do a notarized statement that the funds are not available to the board. And what I did not do and what I will not do, there's a thing called suborning perjury. If you don't believe something is true and you tell somebody to sign it, then I'm culpable. I won't do it. And the bottom line of it is that's not a new, true statement, and you didn't have one member of the district prepared to sign that affidavit, not one. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. We appreciate your input. Anyway, back to my original point. It was a horrible contract, a very horrible contract that we should never have entered into, and I feel it falls upon our attorney that should have said, we're not signing that, rewrite the terms. But I do believe that we still have an exit for it. But like Mrs. Studdard said, we can all count to three, so... Um, on that, we might as well take a vote. I have a motion by Mrs. Bola, a second by Ms. Gilhouse, and all those in favor signify by, by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Oh, no. Three, Whatever. Three, two. <laughs> yeah, really. I would like to say to our superintendent, now that we are stuck with this product, I would like to ask you to do a new rollout and do everything possible to make this product a success and a safe product for our students. Mm -hmm. Work with our bus drivers, have retraining, do everything possible that you and Dr. Kemp can to make this a success. Yes, ma'am, to the chair and to the board, we will do just that. We will make certain that we have a, a, a reset on the, on the launch, and we will make sure that we uh, are accountable for professional development, training, feedback, uh, continuous monitoring, and reflection from drivers and support staff in order to make sure <coughs> that this product works for us in the best way it's designed to do so. Thank you. I appreciate that. Our next item is... Item C5, appointment of Clay County School Board CCA and CESPA bargaining team members for the 2017-18 school year. This item was pulled by me. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second, I think. I have a motion by Ms. Gilhouse and a second by Ms. Bola. 
I pull this as we discussed at our agenda workshop. Um, I really believe that our bargaining team should be doing the job that it should be written in their job description and I just do not agree with us paying our bargaining team to negotiate. Um, I know that we've had discussion where they've said well you know department heads get a supplement et cetera, et cetera. why shouldn't they get a supplement you know our teachers aren't getting a supplement to bargain so um, I am just opposed to the fifteen thousand dollars for this did you have something you wanted to add yes ma'am um, I do not disagree I will be removing the fifteen thousand dollar supplement for for administrative staff we will work collectively to um, to make certain we work with all with our union and we will save the fifteen thousand dollars internally I'm sorry so you're not going to pay them no ma'am so it's but it's brought to the board with payment no I was going to pull it but it was hard sorry so are you so are you suggesting that because we, we we have to move on what's here we can amend the motion but, or through the chair I don't know if I can ask this question um, I guess you could amendment I'm not gonna use the funding all that to say I'm not gonna use the funding would you like to table it to the next meeting and you can bring it back then um, I'm not sure is it, is it time Mr. Roski is it time sensitive Yes, if we could get the yeah, we're just names the approved. Team. Yeah, well, ultimately great. the names just need to be approved. This process. So, but but here's 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 my concern. One, we we cannot vote as a board to do something and then have you not do it. That's not. That's why legal. we would be amending the motion or withdraw it and have a new motion stating that we approve the bargaining committees with the deletion of the cost of fifteen thousand dollars. I was speaking. Can I finish my sentence, please? I, my second concern is that the people and I'm not. I don't. I have not spoken to anyone on these teams, right. but we have a past precedence of paying them. They agreed to be on this team, thinking they were getting the supplement. I would not feel comfortable to have those names approved tonight and have someone be forced into a situation where they were used to getting something they may not want to do it because it is extra time it does need to occur after hours so that teachers can come or SESPA members can watch the bargaining as Miss Bolo pointed out in our workshop and I don't have nobody's listening I'm listening, so. I'm listening and I agree with you Miss Condon I, I don't think it's fair to to renege after you've already like you said we've set a past precedent if we're going to do something different then before we appoint these people they should know that that's the expectation yes and I'm not saying that we should not pay them um, I did ask other board members last week as well if they pay all of their bo their bargaining members not all counties do some pay their chief bargainer back and forth and so I'm not suggesting that I'm not open to discussion on this okay. um, I'm just saying that I don't know that it's fair to those um, however many eight people who have agreed to do this that HR is not part of their job bargaining may not be part of their job that, that we would approve it and and through the chair I appreciate that um, we've had conversation with staff in reference to being on this team I have to refer to Mr. Broski if related to um, principals would be the only ones concerned I can tell you my staff we're going to do this during the school day and if it, ha if it goes beyond we're salaried we're gonna get that job done and um, I, I don't think it's fair that uh, if I bring because I'm looking at every supplement within this district if I'm going to look at supplements and potentially um, you know potentially delete some supplements I think this is a start by showing that our administrative staff can move in the right direction and model that same behaviors as well mr. Broski can have we spoke to I think it's just two prin uh, two principals on each principals on the uh, th a total of three principals. principals yeah I mean who are already getting supplements to be principals so they're already receiving a supplement as a principal you know right, but part of the principal's responsibility is not to bargain and that's a that's an added duty yeah right well but I still feel I would say to the chair wrong. respectfully their, their job is to have say in this conversation in reference to looking at um, looking at language looking at implementation um, you know that's part of their job as a principal it really is and then as far as all the district staff I mean that should be just written in your job description mr. Broski and you know the other people on this list here it should just be part of their job description especially 
our HR people. <laughs> I mean, come on, that's your job. I, I guess I feel yeah. uncomfortable with the fact that um, here's what I, it looks like to me. It looks like to me that you two had conversation about this prior to tonight. I came into tonight's meeting. Let me me stop excuse you me. right there. Excuse me, no, I'm you speaking. You are accusing me of you something. You keep interrupting that, no. me. I'm going to interrupt you all I want because you are accusing me of something that is not true. Excuse me. We you can have this. conversations we with the superintendent one on one. I didn't accuse you. you of doing anything wrong. I know. What I said was if you would let me finish my sentence, finish. it seems to me that you two had conversations about this differently than I came into the meeting tonight thinking we were going to discuss it based on our workshop meeting a week and a half ago. So therefore, I'm not prepared to have to make a different vote than we thought we were coming into. I am not saying at all that you cannot have conversations one-on-one -on -one with the superintendent, that he cannot have them one-on-one -on -one with you. That's not what I was saying. What I was saying was, it seems to me that you have a different perspective from conversations with the superintendent than I have, and I'm not prepared to take a different approach to this, and I would rather table this when we can have further discussion. We did discuss it at the workshop. We discussed changing how we do it. The superintendent said he was going to go forward with it this year because bargaining teams needed to be named at this meeting and that he was going to change it going forward. He also talked about possibly bargaining during the school day. Mrs. Bola brought up issues with that. Th th that was the extent of the discussions on bargaining. So I'm not saying you did anything wrong. If you would have let me finish, I would have said that. What I was trying to say is that I am not prepared to have a conversation beyond what we had at the workshop because I didn't have any additional information. So. Are you finished? All right, I guess you are. Well, if you paid attention at the workshop, that was my topic of conversation. Repeatedly, I said. I paid full attention, and that's I offensive. Take, I, take, I was elected exactly like you were. Well, I brought it up at the workshop, discussed it repeatedly. Except I don't have my child in the, in the superintendent's staff. That's really uncalled can, for. Can, can I say oh, something? Can okay, I, can, let's stop. Uh, can I say Chairman, something to the chair? Stop. Madam Chairman, can I, please. Yeah. Yeah, this good. has got to stop. Let's, we are not acting as professionals. Please, let's get on with it. Take yeah, a vote, whatever, okay. but stop Mr. this. Can I make a statement? And I will please. say this. I didn't have any, we didn't have any immediate conversation about me coming this evening. So this is, I will have ownership on this for me tonight in the sense that um, is my understanding since this item was pulled, I, I met with staff today to start to problem solve and think about the optics and the perception of looking at $15,000 and can we do something differently this year. So I will own it, not pulling it completely off this agenda. I will own that process, but I can rest assured that this is nothing that me and Ms. Karakas, Chairman Karakas, has had prior conversation that anyone on this board hasn't had uh, exposed to. I will say that um, I do agree that when we talk about professional conversation, I think it's okay to have storming conversation, but I would ask that everyone please, as much as we can, be respectful in, in our demeanor and our dialogue. I will always also say that staff that I hire are qualified, able personnel, regardless of who they are. I don't hire based on who you're related to. I don't hire based on who you know. I don't owe anyone here or in Clay County political favors. I owe kids. So I just want to go back to, to saying that. And um, please let me know. And um, as a new superintendent, I, like I said, I own it. Maybe I should have pulled it. And um, just let me know what I need to do and in order for us to move forward. We could potentially have an, uh, a, a meeting in the next two weeks, um, uh, emergency meeting based on school Y anyways. And Mr. Broski, can I, can I have two week window to revisit this? That way I can work with the board and also identify uh, personnel who are willing to go and, and give their time for, for something of this nature. Yes, sir, no problem. Okay, so. Mr. Davis. I was of the understanding that um, CCA and SESPA, they haven't named their bargaining team yet, correct? Um, I don't know. Can I ask Miss Piva? Miss Lee? Just kidding. Miss Piva. Uh, no, we have not. Can you state your name and your address? Just kidding. If I could just say a couple things. Mike? Yes. My, and the reason I was asking that question is I'm just not understanding why we have to approve it tonight, why we can't push it to the next meeting if you guys haven't approved your team yet. 
And I have had a um, conversation with Mr. Davis about this because, as you know, um, we're losing our executive director and we're interviewing on Saturday because Tracy took another job. And I have asked that, uh, you know, please from Latitude here because I can't figure out my bargaining team because I need a new executive director because I always like my executive director to be the chair. With all due respect, I badgered Mr. Van Sant last year and we did not have a bargaining team until I believe May or it could have been June but maybe May for sure it was definitely not done in April so there really isn't a reason everybody needs to you know step back because I know you're trying to do some new initiatives and take a take a breath here but I'm not going to pressure you into going into bargaining until I have my team ready that's for sure well, um, like and agree. you know maybe that's yeah. a good idea so you yeah. can take a look of what you what you want to do yes ma'am you know um, and I want to remind the board that a few years ago, um, Mrs. Adams tried to actually not put any principals on the bargaining team. And I was the one that advocated for it because, Ms. Condon, because they do deal with teachers all the time and they have different perspective and different input at a school-based level. And I thought that was beneficial. Um, I'm not getting into what you're doing. That's all your business. <laughs> but I wanted to remember some perspective in this and CCA is not rushing you. Take your time. Please know, I, as I said before, I am not opposed to not paying. Right. Me either. I'm not opposed to that yeah. either. I just, like you said, I, I just feel like the expectation on our staff, it's not fair. They signed up for something that they're not going to get. Yeah. So we have, we have a motion and a second. Do you want to, the motion uh, was to approve the CCA and the CESPA bargaining teams. It was, um, a motion by Ms. Gilhouse and a second by Ms. Bola. But we're approving it wanna, with the $15,000 supplement. If we approve it, we're right. approving it with the supplement, or we can withdraw the motions and table it till next month. Mm -hmm. It's now, we months. could approve it. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. And if um, we've all, I've already, my staff already knows, so the only three individuals that do, do not understand the supplement would be the principals. Yep. I mean, and we've already talked to them. So if we get to a part where three principals and they want to be paid and want to be compensated then we bring it back and we put the we put the, the money on it if that's okay and may then we'll look to change it down the road may i ask how those principals sure. are selected we'll do you assign yeah or we'll, it's uh actually so they volunteer. I, I i selected uh, individuals who i believe will bring value to um to to this discussion and in that sense i try to look at different grade bands and um then we i have mr broski reach out to start having the conversations uh, is there interest level? Do you, do you want to be a part of this process? And um, everyone that we asked initially uh, immediately responded with a yes. And I, I do respect the fact we can go back and circle back financially and see if it, it's uh, you know if that's part of what they do. I can tell you um, you know uh, surrounding counties they they don't they don't pay staff and um, and they just do the body of work. So but it, Saint I John's get, pays their chief bargainer. Um, I know they're who. St. John's pays their chief bargainer. I'm not oh. suggesting, again, that we pay anyone. Sure. I, I don't, well, and actually I don't we are because we've got Leonard Dietzen on retainer. So, I mean, what are we paying Mr. Dietzen's, you know, we're paying yeah. somebody so. to come in. Well, I was all I, collective I, bargaining already. Yeah. It was your motion, my second, but I'll I, withdraw my motion. I will withdraw my second. All right. All right. So, um, we will, you will bring this back to us at the next meeting. Well, we need a motion to table, I think. Oh. Yeah. Well, do you, do you want a table or just postpone it? I mean, we can just instruct them to bring it back. It doesn't actually have to be a motion to table. If, it, if there's a, if there's a, if the motion is withdrawn, then it's just automatically tabled until the next time because it fails for lack of motion and second. Okay. And so that doesn't mean that you can't bring it back up. You can bring right. it back up. Okay. So you'll bring that back to us yep. at the next meeting. And, and to, the, right. to the chair, I'm sorry to extend this. I'm sorry if, if I created inks, we'll, we'll, we'll work this process and we'll, we'll be clean and ready and prepared for next time. There, I, I don't feel any angst. Yeah. I hope you know that. It's yeah. more sure. just uh, I'm trying to think of it from the principal's yep. perspective. And I know you, you're a go-getter, and you saw an issue, and you wanted to address <laughs> it right away. And I respect that. But I think it's important that we set an, you know, allow for expectations to reflect. Sure. Um, <laughs> you know. All right, our next item on the agenda is item C6, reappointments for the 2017-18 school year. This item was pulled to discussion by me. Um, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. I'll second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon, a second by Ms. Gilhausen. 
I will tell you why I pulled it and why I asked to have all that information sent to you today. I, I had some concerns. I don't know if you all got the phone calls, but I was very concerned that our media specialists were not um, reappointed to the elementary schools. They were actually involuntary displaced from last month with our allocations, and they were not. Um, I felt that it wasn't handled correctly, but after conversations with Ms. Piva and Mr. Broski, um, Mr. Davis and Mr. Broski jumped through amazing hoops to make sure that everybody who has a professional service contract was um, reappointed and they're working on placing all the others. So I honestly have no issues with it. It was um, issues this morning, but <laughs> they have done a, a fabulous job and I do appreciate all of it. So um, if there's any discussion. No. All right. I'll, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. All right. Our next item is Human Resource Special Action A. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Stutter to second by Ms. Bola. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Our next item is special action B. I'll entertain a motion. I'll move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Gilhausen, a second by Ms. Condon. All those in favor no, say Ms. aye. Oh, aye. I'm sorry. A motion by Ms. Gilhausen, a second by Ms. Stuttered. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Our next item is Special Action C. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon, a second by Ms. Stoddard. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0. Our next item is um, public hearing to approve adoption of the economics with financial literacy textbook. I'll open up the public hearing for any comments. Is there anybody that would like to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. Move, move. approval. I'll second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon, a second by Ms. Gilhausen. All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye, motion carries 5-0. Our next item is D7, public hearing to approve adoption of the career and technology education textbooks. I'll open up the public hearing. If there's anybody that'd like to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Bola, second by Ms. Condon. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5-0.
Our next item is D7, public hearing to approve the revisions to school board policy 4.06, which is the controlled open enrollment policy. I'll open up the public hearing. Anybody that would like to speak on this item? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing, bring it back to the board. I'll entertain a motion. We have approval. Second. Second. I have a motion by Ms. Condon, a second by Ms. Bola. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0. At this time, uh, we've already had our scheduled citizens request, so we will have um, board member comments. Ms. Gilhausen, would you like to start? I'm sure. Um, the one thing I wanted to update you guys on, um, I attended the Clay Chamber luncheon, I think it was last week, and um, there were a couple of people from, well, quite a few people from the Economic Development Committee there, so I got to um, speak with a few of them, and um, Ms. Pavlis extended an invitation to a roundtable discussion on education, which I thought was incredible to see some interest from our Economic Development Committee um, as to what's going on in the education world, so um, she had mentioned um, having representation from our school district, from um, the local community college, St. John's River State Community College, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, and it was very encouraging to me because at our last school board conference, I, sp I spoke with several other board members from other counties, and we talked about the idea of um, strengthening our voice in Tallahassee by rallying with our local chambers and economic um, development committees and helping them understand how high stakes testing affects them um, because it because it affects our school district it affects our um, economy so uh, I look forward to those discussions um, and I will keep you guys posted did she give you a date on when that's going to be not yet we don't have a date yet but she's she's still pulling in stakeholders good. So. very good mm -hmm. thank you Ms. Bola just a couple of things. I just want to reach out to all of those of you who are involved with testing this month and next month. And it'll be over soon. And there will be positive thoughts going out to all of those students. Major positive thoughts because they've prepared for this and they are ready. And you've all done a remarkable job in preparing them. Thank you. Um, number two, I want to do a shout out for the American Legion Awards, which will be coming up for those schools who will be doing promotion ceremonies from 6th to 7th, from 8th to 9th, etc. And if you do, if any of the principals get invitations from the American Legion to give these awards to their top student or students, I strongly recommend that you participate. The American Legion is very willing and able to step up and reward these children. And a shout out, I got to visit the Hive today at Oak Leaf Junior High because the Microsoft Office Systems Certification Awards were being held. These were eighth graders who were taking high school level courses and they passed. And I got to see a few of my former students, which was exciting, and a shout out for Mr. Williams and particularly Mr. Walker, who set this all up. So thank you for that. Ms. Conlon. Um, first, I would like to apologize um, for my outburst. Um, there were, have been a number of conversations lately where I have felt like either last week in Tallahassee with you or with you, Mr. Davis, that, that certain board members had more information or more access to staff than others. Um, I've had staff tell me they're not to speak to us, that we're to go through you. That is a change, and it doesn't seem like that access is, is, is um, across the board. However, I will say that going forward, instead of bottling up my concerns and letting them come out in this kind of forum that um, I'll call either of you and ask if I have a question. Um, certainly not Ms. Karakis on things we would vote on um, for the public to violate sunshine. I'd like to um, make a shout out to um, our agriculture teachers in our junior highs and high schools. Um, thank you for all the countless hours that you're not compensated for that you have been at our fair and doing all the preparation work with our young people up until this point. Um, our last night was steer showing our grand champion winner and our reserve champion winner were both showing for the first time. And I think that really says a lot about our um, programs and, and how deep our ag programs are. And I know a lot of other people have been at the fair 
um, and I appreciate all the work they've done, but our ag teachers put in a lot of hours that goes behind the scenes, and I really appreciate that. And um, the only other thing is that Mrs. Bola and I attended the groundbreaking ceremony today for the Wawa um, over on Blanding Boulevard, and it was really neat. They um, Wawa has a partnership with the USO, and they gave ten thousand um, dollars. The USO use, is using that fund funding for the greater Jacksonville area to provide backpacks and school supplies to military kids and I just thought that that was a really um, great partnership to begin today in Clay County. Mrs. Stoddard. Okay. In case y'all forgot, this is Fair Week and Friday is Fair Day. So all the kids in Clay County need to go to the fair on Friday and support the fair and on that I would like to say that I am glad that the meeting is ended at 8 35 because now I'm only 35 minutes late to see Winona Judd tonight good night <laughs> well don't leave yet <laughs> Come on. Um, okay so I, I have to give a shout out there's a lot that we've all done but I um, was able to go to the regional spelling bee and we had a young man from uh, doctors inlet elementary shiloh cuff who participated he was amazing i think you probably saw it in the newspaper we have got to give shiloh a shout out because he was he was bumped out in the 12th round and then he sat down he told his dad they were wrong that he spelled it correctly <laughs> and he was right there were two spellings of whatever the word was and then Shiloh made it to like round 48 and he was he was in third place and we will certainly see him as a winner I'm certain next year the year after so a shout out to Shiloh um, we've done a lot of things the fair special Olympics I, I have to give a shout out to Miss Condon and I know you're thinking I'm crazy but we were in Tallahassee and this girl can lobby she um, she knows her bills, and she presented so well. We saw probably six different representatives and senators, and um, presented very well. On top of all of the um, high stakes testing, recess issues, um, the budget, we we learned you know quite a bit about the budget and the funding, and so we did. I think we accomplished quite a bit while we were out there, and it went very well. Um, and I appreciate the, the comment. Thank you. The last thing I have is um, obviously after our outburst, we need master board. <laughs> and um, there is an opening for master board training um, September 21st through the 22nd, where the superintendent and the five board members go out and we learn how to work as a team. And um, if that works with everybody's schedule, I know we've all talked about wanting to do it. If it it's at Howie in the Hills, which is um, towards Orlando. If it works with everybody's schedule, they would like for us to sign it and get it back to them. So I have it with us for us to sign tonight. And um, are we all in agreement that we want to do? You said September 21st and, and 22nd? Sem 21 and 22. So it's it's just Thursday and a Friday. Well, it's two days where we go away, and then they come back to us um, okay. three times, three times or four times. And the rest of the training is here. It's probably four hours that they come back. and um, one away. Yeah, we do the one away, and then the next three are here. So, all right, so um, on that, um, I'm okay. done. Mr. Superintendent, good? did you have anything? Yes, ma'am, before I transition or someone transition, Mr. Sykes, um, I would say tonight, uh, you know, thank you for your conversation. A little bit disappointed. Uh, I would say that um, I I speak with every board member, you know, as much as I can, all as I nice can, no one person more than in, in another. I try to be as open as fair as I can because I have to defend my time. I'm not going to allow someone to hog my time because I have work to do for kids. And I would say that I've never told this board they don't have access to my staff. And I could easily make that in a requirement, but I do not. Um, my staff can tell you openly, I say, and cabinet members engage. Is, but the only thing I ask you to do is just tell me the conversations you've had because I feel it's important that you're involved in that process. Um, if you cross a line, I will tell you openly, and, and, and we'll, we'll get back in balance. But um, I've never openly, in agenda review, individually, or on this board, ever tell you you don't have access to my people. And my people will always tell you that maybe I allow too much access, and that's just to be honest, because <laughs> they work for me. And at the end of the day, where it, it, and I tell them openly, 
this is a team. So you're part of my leadership team. I look forward to working forward. And community, we'll, we will get better up here. We'll get better. Madam Chairman, may I make, may I make one comment? Yes. I wanted to check and see. I've just noticed on my phone there's messages here that we were not televised tonight. They can't get it up on the TV. I don't know what it's going to take to get this straightened out, but I, I think we're all really frustrated about the TV, people not being able to watch it on TV. Let's get that fixed, whatever it takes to fix it, please. All right. On that note, me, oh, Mr. Sykes. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, first off, I, 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 I want to tell you that before the election, I get, didn't get to know you, Mr. Davis, didn't get to know Ms. Bull. I, I see the files over the head. Um, but it has been a pleasure to have met and work with you guys. Um, I have enjoyed working with your new staff, Mr. Davis. I've enjoyed working with the old staff. Uh, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve as your Clay County School Board Attorney. And at every turn and every effort, I've tried to be ethical, honest, and professional what I've done. The letter that was brought up by Ms. Caracas tonight about the legal validity of the contract, I did not draft because Synovia told me to draft it. Nancy Racine asked me to draft that letter. Uh, about, and all I did was draft out an absolute plain statement of law. I think even Dr. Kipper, you would agree that it was a plain statement of the law. Uh, I didn't add to it or subtract. It was just the law. In the end, I have done my best with this board to neither side one side or the other, but call the shots as I see it and be an honest broker of what I understand the law to be. And I've tried to be faithful to that. And at, at the end of the night, I can sleep comfortable, comfortably that I've done the right thing. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Sykes. With that, our meeting is adjourned. Drive safe, Carol.